Good evening and welcome to Raconteurs News, bringing you untwisted, unsweetened news. My name's Andy Young and welcome to our new platform on Spreaker. And as always, I'm joined by Jason Holmes. Good evening, Jason. Good evening. Good evening, Andy. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm doing okay, uh, my friend. Uh, just, um, you know, moseying along with life. What about yourself? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been quite an interesting week getting everything set set up to broadcast on our own. Um, but the most exciting thing is there's somebody I've been trying to contact for ages and haven't managed to get hold of him, and you've managed to sort it out for us. Well done, mate. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm the man that tries to... <laughs> Listen, I just sent him an email and he replied, fantastic. Oh, brilliant. So, without further ado, let's welcome Chris Spivey. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Chris. Chris. Good you to talk right? to you, mate. Right, who's going to start off? Me or and you? how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Perfectly well, Brilliant. yeah. Absolutely Brilliant. peachy. So right, what's on well, your radar, Chris? Have you got any, have you got any uh, new things for us? Anything to, anything to update us up on? I have something massive for you. Oh, um, we like massive. We do. We oh, love good. massive. Good. Um, and and I'm, I'm not sure that two hours is going to be enough time to um, talk about it. Oh. Um, well, it's, it's convenient that we can run on at three if you're not too busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always busy, uh, Andy, but um, th- this is really, really important. Um, okay. Um, uh, how it came about um, was I was right in the second instalment um, my expose on, on the um, the parish fraud from November 2015. Um, now, a month or so before that, I'd been contacted um, by a, a Saudi Arabian um, journalist who's living in Germany. And she'd had this theory about um, Princess Diana. Um, and she was willing to send it to me. Um, she gave me a website link and, and, and the links to a couple of videos that uh, have been made. And it was all very professional. Only thing was, it was far too long uh, for me to devote the time to sort of um, reading what she had to say. OK. But it, it was obvious from, from, you know, the first um, that she was saying that, that Princess Diana was kidnapped. She didn't die in the um, in, in the car crash, so we, we fair enough. Um, what impressed me about her was that, I say she, she's a Saudi Arabian, uh, and you know Saudi Arabia's um, views on women. But she she'd been forced to do a runner. She was living in Germany, so she spoke German as well, and English was her third language. But she'd put together this website um, and, and and done these interviews all in English. Um, which impressed me because, you know, that, that, that's no easy task. Um, and I know what goes into writing um, uh, these articles. And it was quite obvious to me that she then, as you know. So I wouldn't be so um, ignorant as to just dismiss it. You know, I always intended to read it. But the problem was, as I say, it, it, the length of it, finding the time to do so. So anyway, I'm writing this, um, this thing on France and I was looking at some photographs and something suddenly became very, very obvious to me, okay, um, regarding someone high in the French government. This caused me to um, sort of take a bit more interest in this, this Princess Diana um, website or whatnot. And from that point on, things sort of, um, the floodgates sort of opened and a lot of information came my way. And it became apparent that Princess Diana didn't die in the car crash. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, no one died in the car crash. In fact, there, there's, I can, there's two scenarios. Uh, one, there was a car placed in the tunnel. Now, it wouldn't be the first time that we know cars have been placed at scenes. Or there was no car at all. Okay. Uh, And it was all done via um, uh, Photoshopping and whatnot. 
Now, to a lot of people struggle with that uh, because they've seen, uh, you know, the moving pictures and whatnot. And let me tell you, I've seen high definition moving pictures of, um, let's take, say, Kez Wingfield, the, the other bodyguard, uh, in high definition, and none of them are who they appear to be on the video. When you watch a video frame by frame, you can see the changes occurring. Um, and it is quite, quite possible, easily done, to, to sort of uh, have a car, a crash car, appear to be there. I said, but there, I can um, tell you, if there was a car there, I can tell you how it was done. Okay, uh, just, shall we, can we just, so what you're, you're saying that, um, Kez Wink, because we, we need to, for people to know the, 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 the players in this. So we've got Princess Diana, uh, Trevor yeah. Reese Jones, who was in the car with her as well. He was a bodyguard, wasn't he? Yes, um, he was. And, well, um, supposedly. Uh, supposedly, yeah. Uh, this, yeah. This is the official story. Um, yeah. And um, Henri Paul was driving and he was drunk. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and, and, you, you, and, uh, Kez Wingfield, you, you mentioned, he's, I, are we talking about images of him from, from um, the Ritz from, Hotel? From various, he, Kez Wingfield is very um, instrumental in pushing the myth uh, of... of you know that Diana died, and and his mate Trevor was badly smashed up and whatnot. Um, he's very very instrumental in this. But Kes Wingfield isn't Kes Wingfield. Kes Wingfield is actually um, a lot of different people, which uh, are, I am going to prove very very soon. Apart from uh, I keep getting delayed in releasing the article because the information now is flowing so fast that, that I can't keep up with it. You know. Uh, I'm, I'm under a lot of pressure to get the article out. I mean, normally on my website, it's updated uh, every day, what it was up until a few months ago. But this has been all consuming. Uh, and what I found out is most people won't be able to um, uh, take it in, won't be able to comprehend, you know? I mean, yeah, just lay it flat. Lay it out to us, uh, Chris. We, we, yeah, go on. We understand that it's uh, it's something that's even well, difficult you, you to say. Have, I mean, for, for for three or four years, I've been hearing about this this mass awakening that's going to take place. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, and 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 those who um, the, the more ignorant in society who 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 go for the official government line and whatnot will not be able to handle the truth. I would go along with that, but there isn't going to be a mass waking up. Uh, of anybody because there's nothing to wake up to. Um, there are no reptilians. Um, if these uh, people who, who are referred to as the elites, if you like, who are, are running the world, and they are running the world, if they are aliens, then their um, ancestors, they came over on the same, the very same spaceship as what we all came under. They're just like us. They're, you know, they're uh, made up, their DNA's the same and whatnot, you know, they, they bleed. If they was, um, if you like, uh, superhumans or super beings, then why would they need the army and, and whatnot to protect them? Why would they um, uh, be so scared of, of, of being discovered, you know, if, if there was these all um, powerful people who know what's what and and and, and shift and, and live in different dimensions and it, it, it it's all um not it's not true i say that they're, they're just the same as us but they are evil they are psychopaths and what has happened is is we have been the world has been taken over by psychopaths and they've done it very very um slowly and meticulously and now they do have a stranglehold on the world. There isn't as many of them as you would think, though, because they all play multiple parts. Hence, this one say back is Wingfield. Um, any, any sort of official video, if you like, of, of the uh, Princess Diana, he's always on there, always pushing the myth. Uh, you know, the, the, the official story. But Kez Wingfield is, is, is a lot of people. Now, what I found out is that nobody died. I, I, I tend to, to... Excuse me a minute. Stop it. The dog having a scratch. 
that wasn't me having a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to, um, uh, there was no car. Same with, you know, people say there was no planes at, at 9-11. Okay, mm -hmm. you, 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 um, Trust that you you know that uh, the, the the theory that there was no planes. Well, I work on the same theory as as the, uh, the there was no car. Although if there was, I don't know exactly how we got there um, because on the twenty third of September, the French judge uh, nineteen ninety seven this is uh -huh. uh, the French judge um, Hervé or whatever his name is, he ordered that the car be brought back to the tunnel to um, the stage of reconstruction. And it came to the tunnel, there, there, there was picture. It wasn't widely reported till a few years later. And, and when it was brought, there is photographs of it being brought back to the tunnel, or allegedly of it, under green tarpaulin. Um, and, 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 you know, there wasn't allowed to be any um, uh, reporters there. You know, the, 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 it was all closed off. Now, there's also uh, a lot of witnesses who weren't used who claimed that the accident took place at midnight, around midnight, and these weren't used. The, the official time was 25 past 12. Now, there was no point in, in Judge Hervé staging this reconstruction in the tunnel on the 23rd of September, a month later. What, what's they going to do? They, you know, the, the, the car's in pieces, uh, they're battered. Uh, they're they going to walk it around? How can they stage a reconstruction? with uh, a car that weighs two tons. Impossible. It was a pointless, pointless episode. It's I think a car that these photos could have been taken, supposedly taken, of the car coming in at 12 midnight on the, um, uh, the, the, the 22nd of August. Um, sorry, the 30th of August, um, 30, 30 and 31st. Um, uh, no one would notice a car on the back of a lorry that's wrapped in a tarpaulin. Everybody would sort of notice a car not wrapped. I mean, as you know, they took the car away, unwrapped, you know. Uh, in fact, they brought it out of the tunnel. They didn't load it onto the lorry in the tunnel, even though they had plenty of room. There's no highway restriction on the Alma Tunnel. Mm -hmm. they actually brought it out of the, uh, uh, the, the tunnel to load it onto the lorry for this photo opportunity. Now, say so this is going on the basis of that there was a car. So, for that to happen, you have all these witnesses saying, uh, uh, you know, at 12 o'clock, they, they was being diverted, that the tunnel was blocked. Even Trevor Reese jones says himself that the, they left a few minutes after midnight. Okay? Um, and it's only it's, it's a four-minute journey from the Ritz to, to the Alma Tunnel. So, you know, that, that sort of gives them a 20 to 25 minute window to get this car in place, um, which no one would notice if it came wrapped in a tarpaulin. No one looks at, you know, they've been diverted at midnight. It wasn't a big diversion. Uh, they just diverted away from the tunnel. No one was like, oh, God, what was the bleeding time at 12 o'clock on a Saturday night? If you, if you, you know, you, if, if, if someone told you four or five hours later that the Princess Diana was, was killed in the tunnel at 25 past 12, you're not going to say, no, impossible. The tunnel was closed off at 12 o'clock. And who are you going to tell? You're not going to tell anyone, are you? Because no one's going to print it anyway. So if there was a car there, it was put there, uh, and these reports, including Trevor Reese Jones, is the, 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 they left the Ritz uh, by the Rue Cambon, at um, just after midnight, that would be correct. I mean, 25 past midnight isn't just after midnight by anybody's standards. You know, it's, it's halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I say that, that that is how, in theory, if there was a car there, it, it, it would have been placed at the scene, and then they took it away uh, un uncovered um, after this photo opportunity. But um, once again, that photo opportunity was staged because um, one minute you have um, press um, free deep uh, trying to, you know, get over each other's shoulders to take photos of this car being loaded up, which has been photoshopped, whichever way you look at it. Um, and, and the next thing, you, you know, you see um, other scenes and there's nobody there at all. Uh, there's a... a, a quite a well-known journalist called Christopher Dickey, who, who was supposedly living in France on the night, 
And uh, he says in his account, I think it was written on the 1st of September 1997, he says in his account that, you know, by the time they brought the car out of the tunnel, it was, it was on his own. And simply like when he went to the hospital afterwards, it was on his own, no one there, you know. Uh-huh. Chris Vicky is, um, is also part of the, uh, the, the setup. All these conspiracy theories that uh, sprang up around it, you know, like Henry Paul was drunk and whatnot, they were all started by the media. And the reason they started was to keep people from going down there. Did the accident really happen at all? Which it right, Chris. Well, that that's just prompted uh, Jeff in the chat room to bring up something which hadn't occurred to me. And I don't know if you remember, Jason, but when John Hamer, who I believe is a friend of yours, Chris, was on with you. us the other Saturday, he did mention the Diana incident. And he said that um, he'd spoken to people who'd seen it on French, live French TV that Diana actually walked away from the car. OK, yeah, I've got, um, I got photographs of that in, uh, in, in the article that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, they're inconclusive, I've got to say that. They're not of Diana in an ambulance, they're of Diana in the back of a police van. Now, every single photo... Every single photo, bar none, of that holiday uh, with Dodio Fayed and them arriving in Paris is a fake. Every single one of them. Diana, for most of the time, when she was photographed, she had a face covered uh, or a hand over her face so you couldn't see her clearly. Yeah. This was done for a few reasons, but um, uh, the, the ones that you can see her clearly, and she looks nothing like Diana at all. And, uh, it, it wasn't Diana. Diana, I'll, I'll, I'll save Diana for a little bit, but, but this wasn't Diana who was supposedly in them photographs. Now, the photographs themselves, they are very, very satanic. I thought, and this includes the CCTV moving images, and what I know about the CCTV moving images, every one of them was fake, by the way, every single one of them. Uh-huh. What I know about them is, is uh, at first I put it down to, you know, my, my theory on, on um, you know, it's a, a false flag because the video is always crap and you can't see what's what. This isn't the case in this. It is absolutely brilliant and way beyond most people's capabilities of what they've done with that because every single moving picture in the CCTV image is every single one of them. That's for every second that it moves, it pyramids up. Okay, you can draw a line, take a line from, uh, say, you know, uh, a handbag or whatever you like, and it pull it along, and it will hit someone's chin, someone's eye, so, and then you take another line off of that, and what you're eventually left with is a page full of tiny little pyramids, and. To be able to do that with moving footage, I mean, where, where would you start even on a photograph? You know, and all the photographs of the holiday, they're all, you're able to pyramid them all up. Okay, so you take a line, and that line will hit something specific. It won't go through the middle of someone's head. It will go through something specific. Uh, you know, the corner of a building, uh, the handle of a handbag. And they all pyramid into perfect little pyramids. It's very, very... I say, it, it, I'm very hard to impress, but I, I was begrudgingly uh, in, impressed with this because to do that, just on, on a, a photograph, to be able to, you know, make these lines, these straight lines, um, that sort of hit points along the way, and then the, the lines that, you know, shoot off it and across it and whatnot, all form perfectly shaped pyramids and I think now now I know that I think if you go back on the um, 11 uh, video footage or any any few that's agreed that it's a false flag you will see that they will meet up now I used to look at, 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 at photographs and think well, well why is that face you know they all seem to have Odd faces, you sort of like a banana-shaped head or whatever, or the nose over too far over to one side. Uh-huh. 
and I just thought it was bad photoshopping, but it wasn't. They all pyramid up. Now, this isn't for our benefit. We're not meant to know about this. There has to be a reason why that's done. Right. Okay, I say, they're very, very, you are not meant to know. And I came across it quite, quite by accident because I, I, I sort of, um, by watching the CCTV footage of Diana's last day, um, a lot of it was filmed out of the front uh, of, of the Ritz. And, and I thought, well, I've sort of seen that before. You know, you're getting the sort, same sort of cars going past at the same time, you know. And I, I quickly came to the conclusion that, that, that all the video footage, uh, the CCTV footage, is all spliced together. And to do that, to prove that, um, I took two separate time, uh, time frames of, you know, say, a, a car pulling up outside. And I went to put my lines... To, to, to show the two um, when, when, when the two uh, pieces of, of the, the two screenshots of the CCTV footage were put together next to each other that the car was in the exact same place and all of a sudden I found this line went, went from you know hit the corner of one Mercedes hit the corner of another Mercedes hit a person in the distance hit in, uh, and, and it would hit these things perfectly perfectly all the way along and then when I come to draw my lines to, to get, you know, um, the, 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 the other um, uh, line, the, the other side of the car, if you like, and suddenly I, I was getting pyramids form everywhere. And so I carried on. And, and, and I, it, it is so, so clever. Um, and this is why people's heads are shaped slightly funny. So, you, you know... Um, the pyramids will pyramid up because if, if someone's nose is, is over just just over just slightly out, you're not going to uh, it's, it's going to miss that nose, and and then it's not. I said this isn't for our benefit. This is for their benefit, and they have to these photos and screenshots. They have to pyramid up. Okay, we're not meant to know that, but they do, and you will. And it's absolutely because how do you get someone? to sort of pose and you have cars in the background and whatnot. How do you set that up so it all pyramids perfectly? Now, I say, don't, I cannot stress this enough. I'm talking about perfectly, hitting corners of buildings, hitting, uh, you know, chins, um, arms, outstretched hands. How do you get people to pose and, and, and get the perspective right so that it all pyramids up and what you're eventually left with is a photograph of little pyramids. That's, impossible. That's... But, 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 that's impossible to, uh, to, to... And I'm an artist, okay? I took 20 years as a tattooist. I wouldn't know where to start because we're not talking about, you know, just, just, just the odd chin or the odd corner we're talking about a photograph that ends up with tiny, tiny little pyramids, all the same size, all the way, all hitting um, specific edges, if you like. Okay, but to do that with moving, whatever point you took, uh, you paused the CCTV screen, you could then pyramid it up perfectly. How do you do that? And this is why, in, in, if you watch the, the, the CCTV footage of that last day, um, they don't walk. They sort of shunt forward. And I thought that was just where they'd slice bits out of the film. But it's not. Uh, they shunt forward, so they go from frame to frame. Every frame is able to be pyramided up. And we're not meant to know that. But um, that, that then works on all the photographs. And I would imagine that it works on all photographs of, of, of um, false flags or, or you know, government-sponsored um, um, uh, operations, you know. Uh, I, I haven't tried it because just, 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 I say, just working on this Diana thing alone is, is, is massive. And from that, I now know um, who Madeleine McCann is. I know who Sarah Payne is. I know who James Bolger is. I uh, I know that um, uh, Michael Stone isn't in prison. I know that Michael Stone didn't kill 
uh, Megan and um, uh, Lynn Watts of Face. In fact, all the high uh, profile murders have not been committed. Okay, I know who Jerry McCann is, I know who um, well, Alan did the doctor who was with Gildando, who's now supposedly the Queen's gynecologist. Alan Farr, then. Yeah, can Alan I can Farthing, I just pick yeah. you up on something there, Chris? Um, yeah. uh, one of our listeners uh, contacted me a while back to say that she was actually on a flight, I don't know, it was to or from Portugal, and the McCanns were on this flight. So can you say that again, because you broke up just then? Yeah, sorry, mate. The, she was on a flight, I've got that. Yeah, the McCanns were on this flight, and somebody oh. was taken ill on the flight, and the stewardess called for, is there a doctor on the plane? And it, this person told me that Jerry McCann stood up and said, I'm a nurse. Now, he's supposed to be a GP, isn't he? He's more than that. He's meant to be a heart specialist. Well, surely, I, I've never known a heart specialist profess to be a nurse. A, she's a, she's a, um, supposedly um, a general practitioner. Um, you, you know, doctor, uh, in, in her own right. Yeah. But they're not, they're not who they seem they are. They're not who they say they are. And they didn't they speak to there. each other. They were on... both there on the 30th and 31st of August, 1997. Now, they, they, for years there's been this rumour that, that Jerry McCann was sort of a um, black man. You know, he said, oh, I had this vision sort of like the end of the tunnel or whatever he said. Uh -huh. Jerry McCann was there and Alan uh, Farthing were there because they're the same person, OK? They are the same person now. So, you... I think I'm telling you, the... Alan Farthing and Jerry McCann are the same person. I'm telling you that Kate McCann was interviewed as a witness to the scene, uh, to the, the crash that didn't take place on the 30th and the 31st. I'm telling you that Princess Diana didn't die. Princess Diana wasn't there because Princess Diana doesn't exist. She exists as a series of people, OK? A series of people. Who so are so all... what, you're, what you're talking about here, um, Chris, is you're talking about... Um, we had a, a guest a few weeks ago... Um, a guy called uh, from the states called Lennon Honor, and he his theory is that um, he calls it the global motion picture stage show, and he says that everybody from uh, public life to to is an actor, um, they are. and Every single they're, one of they're them. just I playing. Can, I can prove that. Yeah, and they're just playing this through. I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of Lennon, um, but his 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 stuff's really really good. Um, and he, he, he's talking about a similar sort of thing that all these people they're, they're actors, and, and which is why Jason, you get Jason. good actor, you get actors going into uh, into politics. Jason, yeah. let me tell you, there is not a single photograph of Diana. Okay, uh, most of the photographs have blurred backgrounds, or it should be on. There is not a single photograph of Diana that hasn't been photoshopped. Not one single one now photoshopping is an art some of it is very very good and, and, and nigh on impossible to um uh, to spot without you know uh, going into all, all the technical um what's it that they do others are just you know sort of slung together willy-nilly and, and you have an arm that shouldn't be in there um you know sticking out somewhere and whatnot but there is not a single photograph of diana that hasn't been photoshopped most of the photographs of diana all came from the beta. There's about a dozen, um, a dozen shots which the head is used all the, all the way through. And you, you look in at uh, uh, Diana, fact, you, you want to go into uh, you know, Google Images or whatever now and, and, and get Lady um, Diana up. And you have a look at the poses, the head poses. Okay, they're all the same, all the same, all the same look, you know, to his head and what. Of course, they took a head to um, uh, hide. Um, Lots of things, it, you know, it, it completely changes the perspective of a photo. Not a single, because you didn't exist. Now, this, you, you might have heard that, that, that all all this, you know, was were, were sort of destined or, or planned before Diana was even born, that, you know, she was going to marry Charles and whatnot. Now, now, I now know that that is true, I say, because you know, she's had a life in people. Although there's very, very few uh, photographs of Diana as a, um, a youngster, but what they are, 
that you know she's sort of beyond the end and she she supposedly had two sisters and a brother um and, and she'd be like sort of plonked on the end of a sofa or whatever you know just a, sort of unnatural because she doesn't exist she never existed okay i would guess uh, i would guess that um lady heather hallett if you want to google her i would guess she would know the identity to diana and I would guess that Rosa Moncton, of the Moncton spy family, they're, they're, um, uh, they're called the, the, the ultimate spy family. Um, a lot to do with the Telegraph newspaper. Is that lo the family of Lord Moncton? Yes, that's it. Uh, Christopher Moncton, yeah. Yes. Rosa Moncton. Rosa Moncton is without a doubt. You listen to her voice um, and listen to Diana's voice and... Rosa Moncton is definitely Diana. Heather Hallett, uh, who, who, who did the 7-7 um, um, seven, seven, uh, in, inquest and whatnot, she's definitely Diana. There's been various um, <clears throat> others. Um, Jill Dando, for a start, she uh, or Diana played her. They are a series. The, the world is made up of actors, okay, who... Um, who play multiple roles now? When you when you put put Jerry McCann, who who had this sort of light light at the tunnel uh, at the end of the tunnel experience, um, and 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 people was reading all manner of stuff into it. Um, I, I say, well, he was there. He, he was instrumental. He was uh, one of the doctors who sat at the table um, at the press conference. In fact, he was a lot of people. He's also now. I can prove this, and I do prove this in, 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 in the article that's coming out, but the reason it's taking so long is, is because I'm having to do frame by frame video, um, that was shot, you know, um, to, so you can see where the change comes about. Um, and they have um, a lot of actions that you normally wouldn't think nothing about. Open hands, spread fingers, pushed out. Um, you can see that, and I know you, <laughs> the, the listeners can't, but like that, they all do that. That that means something. There's also a little girl that appears. Now, she appeared um, when Diana was supposedly walking back into the Ritz when they were supposedly plagued by paparazzi, which I wasn't. There was no paps there at all. Um, there's a little girl standing just to, um, to, to the right of her in a pink top. Now, this little girl um, also appears at other false legs. Um, and, and, and I've got them all logged. And there's something significant to that. And I, I believe that she's meant to portray Anne Frank, you know, the the, uh, the girl who supposedly died in the the um, Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Okay. She, she's meant to represent her. Uh, uh, so you've got this, this, this hand, this, this, this movement, and they, they, they work it in. And they were uh, to go back to this actors thing. What they do? They have like um, uh, I don't know. You, you wouldn't call it really. You, you know, Bo Selector, uh, the, the, the 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 program, the comedy, Bo Selector. Yeah. And he's got these great big, big bottom faces sort of attached to him. Yeah, sort then of a chin. It, it's like a, a prosthetic chin, a bit like um, uh, Kenny Everett used to wear. Yeah. It is what it is, but obviously that, that, that's taken to a, a piss-take form. You know, this, uh, you, you're not meant to see it, but you can see it if you look very, very closely. And you can see it in photographs as well, because what do you look, if you look at someone's, the side of someone's face in a photograph who, who's got one of these on, it'll be, there'll be a different texture to it, okay? And, and you'll be able to see the line where it's gone. But <clears throat> what happened, they, they wear these, like... I don't know whether it's um, uh, a sort of spray on skin or, or, or whatever it is, but it, ca it can't be very thick or whatever. But you can see it, and you can see it in photographs. You get uh, any photograph, you get a photograph of David Bowie up now, if you like. <coughs> High definition one, whatever you like. And he'll have, like, he goes under the eyes like that, okay? And, 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 and round we can't, side. Sorry, Chris, we can't see you. You've not got your camera on, so... <laughs> have a eye. No, no. I'll put it on so you can, because you might be able to explain it to you and your viewers better. Well, it does, it, it, it's like so, mm. okay? Now, you get any photograph of, say, David Bowie, um, uh, anyone you like, really, because they're all involved in it. Any, anyone who's high-profile is involved in this, um, uh, this 
manipulation of the world, if you like. Yeah, your video's and, just come back on, and, and, Chris. Sorry? Your video's just come back on. Could you just show yeah, us again, no, please? Yeah, I'm sorry, I could show you. Because what, um, what Kez Wingfield actually does in one video is he points out where he, he's, he's um, false, pathetic, whatever you want to call it, is. But I make now he's talking about something else, and he goes like this three times and he traces the line of it three times right you know and no one would ever cut on now I cannot believe um, I, I do set myself high standards I cannot believe that I have been so duped so stupid so blind as not to see what is in plain sight because every single photograph of the accident is fault is fake that wasn't the car. Uh, um, they can't even decide whether it was a 94... Uh... Mercedes? No. Oh. Chris is no, back. The 94 uh, S-Class, the back changed. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep losing you there, Chris. Probably, yeah. But, um, they won't want this coming out at all. Um <laughs> In 1995, the back of the Mercedes changed, so the lights was sort of on, on the, uh, the the rear wing and on the boot as well. Do you understand? Uh-huh. Yeah. Whereas yeah. 94, they were just on the wing. I get you. Okay. But most of the photos in, in, of the car in the tunnel, uh, of, of the, um, the, the Mercedes um, 688LTV75, now, it starts at the top of my head. How's that for? Um, it isn't that car. And that was a 94 car, but it's got a 95 back in, in most of the photos. But they're, they're all photoshopped, okay? Um, which, which, once again, I, I will prove them. Most of them show two cars. Um, they're the back of the Mercedes, which I imagine was the Mercedes that they was driving uh, throughout the day. Um, it was called, uh, uh, you'll come to me the registration in a minute. 405, 405, JV, 405, JVJ, 75. There you go, straight mm-hmm. off the top of my head again. Uh, um, the, the Mercedes that was supposedly using all day, I would imagine that is the back of it. Now, the, the back of the um, 405, JVJ, 75, has a black registration plate with white numbering on it, whereas the uh, the DEF car, if you like, the uh, 688 um, LTV, uh, 75, had a yellow plate with black writing on. The DEF car, again, has the aerial on um, top of the roof, centre to the centre back of the roof, whereas the JVJ, the one that was using throughout the day, uh, had a very prominent aerial on the rear wing. Okay, very prominent with, with like, rubber uh, surround at, at, at the bottom of it, you know? Uh-huh. The reason for that is, is, was to, um, so as, as no one could get mistaken with the two cars. Do you understand? Uh, the black register, with, with black uh, number plate with white writing is quite, quite, quite unusual and, and quite noticeable straight away because most, most of them at the back, the registrations are yellow with black writing on. That's and right. I say they have this great big prominent aerial that's been drawn in in a lot of um, say, you know, tourists, in very common uh, videos of, of, of outside the bridge that night. <clears throat> and I say the reason for this is to keep anybody from thinking, no, that could be that car, because it is that car. Okay? It is that car. LTV, the, the 688 LTV um, 75 car, the DEF car, if you like, mm-hmm. was supposedly stolen at gunpoint. Um, it probably was stolen, to be honest, and, and, and written off. Um, and, and then... Transferred to be used as as the death car. Uh, there was all without doubt in on it. I mean, the, the doctors. Once again, the doctors. They're not doctors. Well, what kind of doctor poses at the tunnel after <laughs> after you, you know sort of um, supposedly trying to save someone's life? They don't. You know, the, the man who put Trevor Reese Jones back together. He's um, he's Kez Wingfield as well. Um, once again, I'm, I'm not just asking you to take my word for it. I am going to prove this to everybody, all right? um, beyond all doubt. Everything, everything that is anything isn't. All right? The world really is a stage, and we are 
run by actors. Okay, without a doubt. Sarah Payne, get, get a photo up now of, of Sarah Payne, the girl who was murdered. Get a photo up of Madeleine McCann. And look at them. Madeleine McCann is Sarah Payne. Anyone I'm just you like? doing that now. Just do, I'm sorry. I'm uh, I'm just doing that now. I, I, there are a lot of similarities, aren't there? They're not I mean, 100%, 100%, 100%, mate. Yeah. They're, they're not, <laughs> they're not, they're, 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 there's a particular picture of Sarah Payne in a green jumper. Okay. Uh, she's with the rest of her family. She's got a green woolly jumper on. Yeah, is it like a zip-up fleece type thing? Uh, no, it's, it's actually like a jumper. Right, okay. Oh, I've got one with a with a Mickey Mouse T-shirt on, but who are we talking about? Sarah Payne or, or Sarah, Mary McCann? Sarah Payne. Sarah Payne. Yeah. Or even, even if you take the main one where she's in red, and you just put it next, next to Madeline McCann, you see they're the same person. But um, Madeline McCann. Wow. This. <laughs> This is absolutely mind blowing stuff, Chris. I mean, we've all heard the phrase. This phrase. is going to get me killed, Andy. This is going to get me murdered, mate. We are, uh, I, don't, I know that for a fact. But... Yeah, I mean that that would be a concern of mine as well, mate. Um, um, I, I've heard it so, so often hey, said about she people. Was on your pe- um, people who are whistleblowers. They get twenty-four hour day protection. Yeah, I don't get that twenty-four hour day protection. Tommy Robinson used to get uh, 24-hour day protection. You know, why would Tommy Robinson get 24-hour day protection? Why mm. would Katie Hopkins get 24-hour day? I mean, Katie Hopkins is he, just a, a toned-down version of me pushing the party line. Yeah, you know? well, if if you went to why would Tommy Robinson get 24-hour protection, uh, I'd just make a one-word suggestion of Israel. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he he he. Uh, Tommy Robinson was just a, a persona, a character like everybody else. Uh, yeah, you, you know. Uh, oh, we're losing you again, Chris. Lost you again, Chris. Uh, I'm still here. Oh, well, that's yeah. It, your Skype just keeps cutting in and out. It's uh, hey, well, a bit strange. I've had awful problems. Um, they're, they're trying to stop this article coming out. I've had, I've had awful, awful problems um, the last few days, in particular, of, of staying on the internet. It's not hardly surprising when you're putting this information out, mate. That is for certain. If you get picture up of Jerry McCann and, and Alan Farthing as well, you, you will see. Uh, you have to get the right photos, but you you will see that they're the same person. As is um, him who was supposedly looking for Madeleine McCann. And would. He's Jerry McCann. And, and, uh, uh, now, the, the, the thing with Alan Farthing, he was engaged to Gildando, who was also Princess Diana. And Gildando was supposedly killed by uh, Barry George. Barry George is Ramondo Ra. <laughs> That's pronounced that. Or... Roland Rat, if you like. <laughs> that is Barry George. You get pictures up once again now. Get a picture of Barry George up and, and Ramondo Ra, the, 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 the bad guy, the pantomime villain in, in the, of the paparazzi. It's pronounced Ra, apparently, but it's spelled R A T. Meant to remind you, you straight away, you meant to remember his name because of Roland Rat, who was uh, prominent at the time of the, uh, the, the crash. Mm. Barry George is. Roland Rat, Ramondo Ra, or whatever you want to call him. So, look, Chris, if you look at the paparazzi, you look at the paparazzi all together, all those that were arrested, they're all the same person, they just photoshop faces, uh, the same person. They all look, which is in common. They're not real people, they don't exist. So, so what, what do you think is the purpose of this, Chris? Do you money. Think this is just to keep, money. Us, keep us occupied? No, no, it's, it's all to do with money. Now, the, the, the Paget report... At the time, cost uh, well, all not the time, but four or five years ago, when I first wrote about it, uh, when I believed that she'd been murdered, that how stupid I was, was reported to cost twelve and a half million pounds. Okay, it is now being touted that it cost three million pounds. Uh, so where's the uh, where's the other nine million gone? And it's all about money. Now, if Diana didn't exist. 
but she was on the civil list getting millions and millions of pounds every year millions of pounds in protection that wasn't actually taking place the money was going to someone the Madeleine McCann investigation Andy Redwood okay is Jerry McCann all right get a photo up again and then look very closely at Redwood and you can see what I mean about the prosthetics now mm. So where did all that money spent on that investigation? Again, I think that was totally about £12 million. Whose pocket has that £12 million gone in because no investigation took place? Well, we... we, are we... The Madeleine McCann thing, I mean, that's been... Uh, Madeleine contentious. McCann, she was also... She wasn't just uh, Sarah Payne. Um, she was also... Do you remember that little girl um, a, a couple of years ago who was supposedly stolen by gypsies in Greece? Oh, yeah. Was that Ben Needham? Ben no, Needham. but Ben Needham... Let me tell you about Ben Needham. Ben Needham is Jamie Bolger. Get a picture of Ben Needham up as a kid and get a picture of Jamie Bolger up. So, so what about the now, parents? There, there's two Are people the parents are so in because if I know that Jamie Bolger is Ben Needham... That means I know who Jamie Bolger's family are. And I'm not even going to tell you who Jamie Bolger's family or Jamie Bolger's father is, but there'll be very, one very worried man at the moment because he's very well known. OK. <laughs> wow. I mean, this is quite a lot to take in. It, it is a lot to take in. Uh, take, take the two killers, Venables and Thompson. Yeah. Right, the, 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 the police pictures of them with the short hair they're actually little girls wow <laughs> that yeah, so they take the piss they take the piss out of it in plain sight them, them two Venables and Thompson in them photos holding their police fingers looking at, you know, against the tape measure little girls with haircuts Well, I'm just looking from uh, Andy Redwood to Jerry McCann, and I can. And, and Alan Alan Farthing. The same guy, yeah. is it? The same guy, yeah. Uh, oh. The, the Redwood has a lot of uh, padding around his jowls and whatnot. And that's all kind of. Well, what you look at, what you need to look at is, is ignore the outer casing. Look, you know, sort of on, on a line down from the eyes. Yeah. It's all to do with the eyes. You look at the eyes, the eyes are all the same. And then you need certain photos where they're caught off guard because they're actors. Uh, and, and, and you can change your makeup, just changes a face. Okay. Um, Julie Shaw, you might think that uh, it has, um, uh, you know, it's an inconsequential program. It's not. Sherlock Cosby is. Um, uh, <laughs> no, I won't say she's the man. She is the cast. <clears throat> she is the cast. And Charlotte Cosby had a lot to do uh, with Madeleine McCann. Josie, um, Josie Lawrence, is it Josie Lawrence? No, Josie Lawrence. They, they, you know, the sister of um, Lynn Mbava. Josie Russell. Oh, it. We've lost Chris again. It, it, we keep yeah. losing you. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, pretty mind blowing stuff you're putting out there. It is, and and I, I'm not going to ask anyone to take my word for it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to prove it to everyone in the articles that are coming out. That's why they're taking so long, and why they keep. I mean, um, you, you know, I, I keep giving people like three days tops. It'll be ready, and something else will come in. And, and it, it, the, the connections to it uh, are, are that many that it involves a major rewrite, uh, do you know? <clears throat> a lot of it's to do with Paris. It's all to do with Paris. Of course, um, if you know the, the Diana story, the fake sacrifice story, um, there's the Statue of Liberty, who is the goddess Diana, uh, or, or Isis, if you like. ISIS are infiltrating France, so Paris, France, 
well, with, with all these false flags. Paris is the city of light, the Illuminati are the enlightened ones, and it all goes, you know, all, all goes along. Everything is connected, everything, right down to um, that, that fake group uh, here, what is it? Um, death metal, um, Eagles of Death Metal. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, a more fake group that 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 man. Oh, I could strangle him quite cheerfully. Um, the, the, the singer who we're, we're we're meant to believe that this uh, Eagles of Death Metal have been going since uh, I think '97 actually '99 right? with with Josh Hom. Um, he's the only full time member. So really, you haven't got a group called the Eagles of Death Metal. You've got uh, you, you got this fellow called Jesse Hughes, this uh, Satanist, self confessed Satanist. Jesse Hughes, whose girlfriend is is a hardcore porn star. Okay, now the Eagles death metal. I just knew without even, but I've since found out because I've, I've now found um, an article, a Daily Mail article, to the fact. I just knew that Diana would be uh, a big Eagles fan. Okay, right. And then so you got the Eagles of death metal. The car was just um, a death metal. If you like, there's your name for start. Now, <clears throat> just before the, uh, the the shooting, the, the false flag uh, took place in Paris. Um, Jesse Hughes appeared on on TFI Friday with Chris Evans, the newly brought back program. Uh, Chris Evans kind of attracts some big big names mm -hmm. uh, without the, the the likes of Jesse Hughes, who who's an, has no talent whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, um, he came. He came on. Um, Jesse Hughes appeared on TFO Friday. I say about two weeks before uh, the Bat Clan stewing, which once again, Bat Clan Club, you associate with Batman Club straight away to keep it in people's minds. Same as Ramondo uh, La uh, pronounced Rat or, or spelt Rat. You know, Roland Rat keeps it. And people associate, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. But two weeks before that, he, he appeared on Chris Evans, supposedly releasing their new single, which was Duran's Duran's Save a Prayer. Do you remember the 1980s hit, Save a Prayer? Yeah. Save a Prayer for me. Okay. Um, that was supposedly <laughs> the Eagles of Death Metal's um, new single, and they appeared on TFI Friday singing it with um, uh, Duran Duran, or, or, or at least Jesse Hughes and, and the guitarist. Uh, from Eagles Death Metal appeared on TFI Friday singing it live with Duran Duran singing it out, you know. Duran, uh, Simon Le Bonbon, who, who I'm not a great fan of, did uh, actually show Jesse Hughes up for the uh, lack of talent that he has, the lack of star quality that he has, the lack of charisma that he has. Why they picked this Jesse Hughes, I don't know whether it's something special. But um, I'll tell you, now Duran Duran was also uh, Diana's favourite group so there you have the Eagles Diana's favourite favourite group of death metal the car um, releasing the single Save a Prayer which went on to um, raise millions for charity after the uh, Batman Club shooting you know and that's how they raise millions through, through, through charity straight away. You know, you have pages set up for these victims uh, within an hour of, of, of a hoax taking place and 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 that is what it's about. That and power. Because psychopaths have to have power. They have to uh, control people. And that is what it's about. It's not about uh, anything else. It's just money and power. And, and pulling the ball. And they take the piss, I say, by, by the Venables and Thompson. They are, they're little girls. They're not boys in them photographs. They're little girls in them photographs. And that, that's what... It's imp in plain sight and this is why people when they say there's going to be this mass awakening and people uh, who, who are, are so entrenched in the system if we like you know um, believe every single word that's in the paper um, they, they, they won't be able to handle the truth and it's right because they won't because the truth is everything is fake everything is fake okay now, um, uh, Sean Russell, um, Megan, Megan Russell, Megan and Josie Russell's dad, weren't they? Right. His, his wife Lynn got yeah. murdered along with uh, uh, Megan, and Josie survived, didn't she? That was the story, anyway. Sorry, Chris, you, we've lost you again. Sean, 
Sean Russell is Sean go. Jenkins. And Sean Jenkins is Trevor Reese Jones. You know, so Sean Jenkins, the yeah, uh, sure, Billy yeah. bi killed, supposedly did time for killing Billy Ray what's a face. Yeah, he was, he was a stepfather, weren't he? Wasn't he a foster yeah, father? Yeah, uh, he was foster care, he was. He was, he yeah. was a headmaster. Yeah, and he, he, uh, then she was found dead in the garden, weren't she? Supposedly battered up in the back garden. Yeah. Yeah, terrible work. Terrible crime. Uh, uh, it's Sean Russell. And, um, uh, and together they're both Trevor East Jones. Wow, I mean... Trevor East Jones wasn't hurt at all. Um, it, it was all, 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 all pathetic. You might, you might have had a score there. I'm losing you again. <laughs> you keep going out just oh, the right dear. moment. Well, uh, Luby Lou's just posted in the chat room, it's not often you hear Randy and Jason lost for words, but uh, I'm certainly a bit... My guest has been well and truly flabbered tonight. <laughs> you don't know I'd, half of them, mate. You don't, I'd, I'd, you don't know. Chris, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to ask your opinion on... Um, I, I, I've always thought that uh, David Rathband and his twin brother were the same person. Who's David Rathband? Uh, who, who Raoul Moat shot. You know the copper that Raoul, oh, Raoul Moat no, shot? Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're, they're all fake. They're all, all, probably. I, haven't, I can only do so many. Uh, no, of but, course you can. Yeah, yeah. Blind fella who, who supposedly killed himself. I, I can, uh, they, they probably are. They, because everybody is literally everybody. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just going to say that there, there's a lot left. I tell, <clears throat> let me shock you again. Dodi Fayed never existed. Right. Okay. There, there's a, a man that they use uh, called Kareem Fayed. Mm -hmm. uh, Mohammed Al Fayed doesn't exist. He is uh, his brother-in-law, um, Khashoggi, the arms dealer, who supposedly died. Not the same bloke, same person. Wow. So, uh, uh, don't, uh, <laughs> Hang on. Hey. Everything, everything <laughs> was written before, right? Um, Mohammed Al Fayed, because we will have to call him Mohammed Al Fayed, otherwise it gets really complicated. Mohammed Al Fayed, who isn't Mohammed Al Fayed, uh, was destined to buy the Fulham Football Club because it has significance. He was destined to buy Harrods because it has a significance. Okay? Everything, everything is written years and years beforehand. Uh, and, and, and they play along the line and they play it out and that's what it is, a play it's an act and, and do you think this is just to, to create a totally false reality <laughs> for everybody who watches it, the news it, it, it's to keep people confused it's to keep people scared it, 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 it's about, I say, about power it's about having one over yeah. uh, on, on us and, and now throughout the, the, the footage of the car crash in the tunnel there is pictures of clowns and what. Sorry, we lost you a bit there, Chris. There's pictures of what? Sorry. Things like Princess Diana's image, or, or, or clowns, or aliens, or ghouls, and and you know you, you, you see these, and you ah, and but it can't. Then you realise that it can't be um, just a trigger to lie, the reflection. They worked in because they take the piss. They're taking the piss out of us. Same, same. Thompson and Venables, young boys. They use young girls for short hair, with haircut. Um, it, 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 I think... Uh, I haven't got my notes in front of me. I, I think... Oops. No, Chapman, who... Jessica Chapman, who... Um, who... Is Edgar posing... Murdered. As, as, they're the same person, anyway. Venables and Thompson are the same person. Now, Michael Stone, who supposedly killed Meghan and Lynn Russell and, and, and left Josie Russell for dead, is uh, Holly Wells' dad. 100%. Get a picture up of Michael Stone in prison in his green jumpsuit and get a picture up of Holly Wells' dad. They're the same person. Well, it, it is certainly... <laughs> It is certainly fascinating, and as you said at the beginning, you conceded that it's, this is... It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. You think, well, what, what do you do, you know, do you, keep, do you want to keep your credibility and, and, and keep quiet? 
all do you want to tell the truth and it's truthful as, as I see it and I can't keep quiet about it because it is uh, you, you know uh, what was his what, I, I can't remember Mr. Wells's first name um, no I can't either he 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 is uh, Michael Stone. He was the he was the bald headed one, weren't he? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I mean, again, that that was something that we've spoken about on this show. Um, the 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 way that that whole event sort of unfolded, and and the unrealistic part of it, you know how. Um, Holly and Jessica's parents were going to a Manchester United football game, you know, as guests, and and the children this, this, had not this, even this, been this, found. This, this is what happened, but you know, then then they're not; they're just made up characters. Uh, Michael, Michael, um, no, Ian Huntley, he is now. I say that there's so much to remember, and this has all come at me within the past two months. The floodgates just opened. Um, he he isn't um, who he's meant to be either. He's not he's not in, um, in 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 a mental secure unit. That's for sure, you know. Because Holly Wells and, and, and Jessica Chapman are still alive, and I think you want to start going and look at Charlotte Cosby from Julie Shaw. Charlotte Crosby from Geordie Shaw. Charlotte Crosby is Geordie Shaw. Vicky Patterson is Charlotte Crosby. Holly Hagen, whatever her name is. She's, they're, all, um, they're all Charlotte Crosby. Which is a shame, because Charlotte Crosby's quite hot. <laughs> uh, well, as could be expected, perhaps, Chris, we've got Paul asking in the chat room, has Chris lost the plot? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to prove it. If, if I... Um, live long enough to prove it. I, I, I'm going to prove that. I'm, I'm going to put material out um, sometime tonight because I'm not going to get time to finish it, and it's important. As I say, the information, the evidence is all stored. It's not just here because it, it's too explosive um, um, to um, keep just here. Uh, do you know? Um, and, and this is what I say to you. Yeah, I, I can appreciate where, where Paul's coming from um, because. I actually, I did think I was losing my. Well, I thought, no, I'm, I'm seeing something wrong here. Do you know, this, this this can't be. And but this is what I say to you: it is too too far out there mm. to um, for people to believe. Well, it, it's it's not many days since I said to someone, uh, just have a look at the footage of nine eleven and and look how the plane melts into the building, which yeah. is you know it, solid steel and concrete isn't going to allow a aluminium tube full of other people's parts to to melt into it and go through it like that. And they just said, well, you're mad. You've lost the plot. And so pe- pe- people are still around that believe the true story of nine eleven, and they think we're off our heads. So I suppose that's a similar there, thing. There's a lot less. Uh, there's, there's a lot less people um, believe nine eleven than you would think, though. Um, uh, you know, uh, people don't necessarily think that there was no planes or whatever, but they know that it's not right. Something isn't right about it. It wasn't nineteen Muslims in box cars. Of course it wasn't. The, the, the ISIS... Oh, God. Am I still there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're still yeah. there, mate. Well, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to send you some photo, but I'm not very good on Skype. Um, to, to back up what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I've got to get the chat box up, haven't I? That's it. And then if I press a photo... And then we go here. Here we go. I'll send you... I'll just send you over a couple of photos now. If... When you know it, my computer was froze. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. Yeah, yeah pro- it's right. It, it, it's come back. I've had this all week. Um, I mean, just just bear with me. A chance. Sing a song or something. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, we just got uh, Graham Hart's joined in, in the chat as well as Tony Hurst, and uh, we've got Chris and Paul, and we've got quite a full chat room tonight. It's quite encouraging. And a shout out to uh, in the other chat room, the Raconteurs News ca- chat room. A shout out to Carrots as well, um, who I suspect is uh, Heath. <laughs> oh right, we've had Carrots in there for a long while. I didn't know if it was Heath. Um, we've also got Arky in the RN chat room. Uh, sorry for the problems with RN chat room. It's a, it's a free trial software, 
and for some reason we didn't realise until tonight it's limited to five people so we'll have that remedied by uh, Friday hopefully uh, but Graham's posted in the chat room the planes were holograms and Tony's saying it's hard to take on the face of it we've all been lied well we've all been here though so I might look further when Chris publishes and I think I'll certainly be doing the same are you back with us yet Chris? Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to get forward. It is what, what, what I'm going to put out is indisputable. Um, although people will try on uh, on the basis that uh, I'm, I'm a neo-Nazi um, racist thug, whatever you know. Uh, never on the evidence I put out, always an attack on uh, on myself. I'm nearly there, gents. Just bear with me two seconds more. Well, it's the same we always find. If people can't attack the information, they attack the, they attack the person. Of information, don't they? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's pathetic and childish. And and we've got Chris there saying he certainly doesn't think there are any planes on 9-11. Uh, nice to see you back in our chat room, Chris. It's... Uh... Been a long time, mate. Hopefully we'll have a Skype soon sometime this week and catch up, mate. Two seconds, can you sing another song? Yeah, no worries. Well, I'm just, right. I'm just looking. We've been going about an hour. Shall we have a Come little on. music break? Um, yeah, let's have a music that, break. That, that, that will us. give me a couple of minutes to um, I say, sort you something out. OK, we'll have a little short music break and we'll be back after this, folks. And welcome back to Raconteurs News. And two excellent tracks there from The Force, a great live band from the northeast of England, and uh, they certainly look to be going places from what I've been hearing lately. Uh, welcome back, Jason and Chris Spivey. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Um, Chris has just been sharing a load of photographs with me, which I've managed to upload to Facebook, so... Anyone who's in the chat room, I will shortly be sharing a link to this album and you can all have a look at the similarities as Chris has showed us. So I'm just about to copy that link in the chat room. Chris, um, there's something you wanted to say when we came back on air. Please go ahead, mate. Uh, no, I don't want to say I don't want to say that just yet. Um, it's, that's better off putting the article because... Um, it, it could put me in a very dodgy position. OK, advice. absolutely, mate. We, we don't want to put you in any more danger than you're already in. Obviously, uh, you, you're going to be watched very closely. And, I, I, I do know that uh, I've had messages. But what they do, they, they send you messages through photographs. They know what I look at. And rest in peace, Spiff and things like that come up. Yeah. Uh, um, I, had a, I had to have an operation. I was in the uh, um, hospital on, on uh, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I spent in the hospital as happens because um, I had a very, very strange thing happen to my hand. Um, well, I, I used to be a tattoo and, and body piercer. And um, to, to supplement that income... I um, I used to sell body jewellery and whatnot, and you know, I cheap costume jewellery. I had a load of, uh, I got a load of stocks. I found uh, one of the rings that uh, I'd ordered, bulk all of the rings, uh, finger rings, you know, um, mm -hmm. on, on on my um, bedroom floor just before Christmas. Didn't think too much about it, really, um, because uh, the, the stock and whatnot just pushed in plastic bags in, in my bedroom, and it, it, one of the dogs couldn't knock the bag or whatever, so I just slipped it on my finger for safekeeping. Yeah, it wasn't too tight, or anything, you know, so you know, just, and I never took it off. And just on, on Christmas Eve, my son came round with um, uh, three of my grandchildren, and I've got three dogs, three big dogs who are very boisterous and, 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 and with, with the three kids and whatnot, not used to them. I tend to put them in the kitchen behind a, a, a child's stair gate. But yeah, a bit taken by surprise, we were a bit behind um, and I didn't have them in time. So it was a hurry to get them sort of in there. And I think I sort of caught my finger. Uh, I don't know how. But I do remember saying once I got the dogs in and that and saying to my boy, he comes up now. I said... Do you know what? I've done something with my finger and bloody earth and I don't know what. And, and all I could think of was I, I banged it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even think too much of it. Um, now I tend to work all the way through the night and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sleeping in the day. So I was asleep uh, 
And he woke me up a couple of days later. I said to my, my, my daughter Stacey, I said, do you know, I've got a bit of a problem here because my finger had swelled right up. Now, the ring wasn't too tight or anything. Right? I could have put it on. If it was too tight for the finger I had it on, um, I would have just moved it either, either side of it, you know, to the, if the bigger finger or the little finger. Yeah. It wasn't too big. And I, like, I only put it on there for safekeeping because it was a sort of a, an okay fit. And I, I just, uh, I never got around to put it on the way. Um, anyway, so we could not get this ring off. And I thought I was going to have to go down to uh, A&E or get a fire brigade or whatever um, to sort of, you know, cut it off. It was no problem. I say it was only, only. I think they cost me about a pound. I was knocking them out for three pounds, something like that. Yeah. At the time, um, the, so they, they were no cost involved. It was just uh, the inconvenience and whatnot. And, uh, my, my finger swelled up. This was the finger that, uh, you know, I distinctly remember it hurting, and I don't know why I'd really hurt it on, when my boy came round. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, anyway, we had one final effort, and we pulled it off, and we got it off. Um, we'd already phoned the um, the National Health Helpline by then, or my daughter had phoned them, you know, to see if they could offer any advice, uh, best way, you know, but what best to put on it to, to, to sort of get it off. But we had just one final struggle before me going down to uh, and they drove it cut off, um, and, and, and we got it off. And all that, my finger sort of stays well, it hurt a little bit, it wasn't too bad. You know, nothing, nothing uh, terrible. Until a few days after that, um, it would have been about the 28th of December, something like that. And it, I woke up with it, and it was absolute agony. Okay. So, I don't like going to that. I, I just, you know, I thought, well, I've had it for over a week and whatever, and, and you know, I haven't died of anything. So we'll see how it goes, but my daughter wanted me to go to uh, see the doctor. So in the end, it, it, it hurt that badly. I said, oh, right, yeah, go on then, make me an appointment. So she got me an appointment. Now, funny enough, she phoned up in the afternoon. Now, normally, you've got to phone in the morning, and, and it's touch and go. You have to be dying to get an, uh, an appointment, you know? But uh, she phoned up in the afternoon and, and, and said, yeah, my dad's got this swollen finger and whatnot. And then made me an appointment right away for an hour's time. So there was an hour between, you know, which was straight. I didn't even think too much of it at the time. And um, so we went there, and straight away, it was a new doctor. Never seen her before, okay? Never seen her before. She had the name on, on the office door. and um, Never seen her before. Before she'd even looked at it, she said, arthritis. And I thought, shut up. You know, this, uh, this isn't arthritis. And she went to touch. I said, don't touch it. No, because it was agony just to touch. Uh, so she goes, no, no, don't, don't. Yeah, definitely arthritis. She said, I'll, I'll make you an appointment. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some forms to make an appointment for an X-ray. Which my daughter Jen joked, oh, well, six months' time. Oh, I thought she was joking, but she wasn't. I thought, yeah, that's when sort of gave me one, because it was obviously swollen and, and, and an angry colour. Anyway, we, we met, and I, thought, I said to her, I said, I knew that was a waste of time. She said, let's go down to um, A&E then. And I said, no, I'm going down there. I ain't going down there, sitting in the waiting room where everyone's staring at me, because I, I was, this was really banging by this time. I'm going down there to sit in the waiting room where everyone's staring at me, and, and, and you, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with people. They've got a cold or whatnot. I said, I ain't going. I said, I'll get a bath, see if the, uh, you know, the, the water sort of eases the pain. What a mistake to make. Cool, I got in there and I put it in under this hole, thinking that, you know, this is going to soothe it a little bit. And he was hanging there. And, and I called Stacey, I said, look, Stacey, I, I think you are. We need to go to the hospital, you know. So we went to the hospital. Sure enough, I was kept waiting. They, they see you straight away, like, they uh, just assess you and whatnot. They give me some uh, morphine. And then I say, in the waiting room for two hours, we're the right fuck, you know. I'm called by this doctor, so uh, we go there, and he was acting like he was scared of me. Now, my daughter was with me, and my grandson was with me, okay? I was not acting, I was in a lot of pain, but I was not acting aggressive, but he kept shying away from me. What the fuck you do? What are you shying away from me for? Do you know, well, I couldn't hit anybody anyway. <laughs> no, no, I was in that much, much pain, you know? Um... And I, 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 I even said, you know, I stuck my stations in there. I said to him, I said, what, what, what are you doing? I, I'm not no threat to you. Because I, I, I could see that, you know, he was seconds away from pressing the panic button. So I said this to him. I said, well, I'm not no threat to you. I'm not going to, you know, I said, I, <laughs> the thought of anyone even touching my finger. 
you know, uh, scares me to death. Let alone no, lamp someone with it. So um, he, he sort of calmed down a little bit and, and he had a look. And he said, well, it is. It is where the ring was too tight. Now you've got it off. Uh, you, you, you sort of clamp the, the blood vessels in your finger and it, it, the blood can't, it's not opened back up to its size yet. And the blood can't, and that's what's causing the pain. And I thought, you stupid twat. I knew he was like, I, I said, well, I haven't had the ring on for like over a week and it's been fine, or, you know, fine-ish. So now you're telling me that the, these blood vessels that, that, that are sort of cramped uh, have only now just um, started to hurt. And he said, yeah, well, you know, the blood was getting through, but it takes a while for the blood. No, total, total bollocks, you know. But he, to cover himself, he must have gone and got... And I said, well, this is a couple of hours after I'd seen the doctor and she told me it was arthritis. She's gone and got his seen the consultant, mother, and he's come down and he said, have you x-rayed it? He said, no, I didn't think, because I think uh, it's, you know, the blood vessels of, of um, sort of uh, being crushed a little bit and, and, and blood's just not running back to normal just at the moment. I went through the week more, you know, telling him that, like, well, I've had the ring off for a week and I've had no problem with it. And now, now you're telling me that they have crushed because we've got the ring off to the, the ring that was too tight, which wasn't too tight in the first place because if it had been, I would have worn it. So they sent me for an x-ray, which was another uh, hour just sitting around it and, and I cannot describe the pain. I I, I I couldn't do nothing. I just I just wanted to die with the pain huh? and we sat outside for another hour and went for the BX right. She couldn't even put my hand in the position she wanted to because it was so swollen. Okay. She couldn't I couldn't put my hand down flat on the the, the plate. She did the best they could and and and, and, and so then we had to wait for another hour of results. When they come back, oh, don't show nothing. Um, yeah, you know, it's not broken or nothing. Oh, well, I knew that. I knew it was broken. Um, I can't remember. Oh, they, they said, just take some nerve affair and sort of fob me off. I... No, 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 I made them. I actually said, tell you, you can get down on the sidewalk. Whatever. We left, okay, after all that. We're, so that's three doctors, one of them a consultant, telling me that there's nothing wrong with it. I couldn't sleep that night. I'd, I'd already been up the night before in, in, in Agony. I couldn't sleep that night. I couldn't do. I couldn't type. I couldn't, all I could do is just sit on the chair I'm sitting on now and nurse my arm. Uh, and that's all I could do. And, and just try try and, 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 and put myself somewhere else um, you know, to, to try and stop this banging, which was going right the way up my arm. So the next day come and and, and Stacey's got up. I didn't wait. Well, you, know, you sort of you into you, you you sort of want someone to to share your problem with you, but you don't want people talking to you because like it hurts so much, you know. And you just shut up. So anyway, Stacey's cut up the next day and, and she sees me and say, "I've had no sleep in two days." Here. I mean, absolutely. And my my finger in my hand it was like a balloon. And um, she said, "Dad, you got you got to go." What's that? I said, oh, man, I'm not going back up. Oops, we seem to have lost you again, Chris. Sorry, we just lost you for a while there, Chris. And you're on, um, you're not, you're muted, Andy, so we can't hear you. Right, okay. do, 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 do I need to rewind? Yeah, just a, a bit where you were, uh, you Stacey's told you to go to the hospital, go back, yeah. And yeah. I refused. I said, like, you know, I went to the doctors yesterday, uh, which was agony getting in the car and driving one handed, like it's automatic. Um, and and I said, then I went down to the doctors, and, and, and they come out with a load of bullshit, which I knew was bullshit. I said, I am not. They can come and see me. I ain't going out nowhere. I couldn't drive anyway by that time. I couldn't move. Just the moving sent the pounding at my hand. So she phoned, um, she, she phoned the, um, who are they? The, the hospital, whatever it is, and, and told them. And they, at, one, one, one. Yeah. And and she said he won't come down. He, he won't come down because he, he came yesterday. See, three doctors, they all uh, fobbed him off. And I, and I don't know, for some reason... They sent a paramedic out. Okay, now... When, when she was being, I said, ask him if I put it in cold... I know I'd put it in hot water the day before in the bath. And it, I said, ask him if I put it in cold water, because I didn't want to test it, even try it. Will that ease it? So she said, 
the, 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 the woman who was speaking to me must have said, yeah, just but don't have it cold, cold. Don't have it ice cold, just have it tap cold. And he did. Every time I stuck it in there, it eased it a little bit, you know. I was so tired, I'll, I'll have no sleep, 48 hours. And um, the paramedic gets there. Now, this is a strange thing, because he said, straight away, you've got to go to hospital. Okay, you've obviously got an infection in your hand. I'm going to take you myself. Okay. And, uh, he said, will you come? And I just, I just wanted to die. I said, yeah. So he said, I have to clear the bank of my car. And when, once I said, yeah, I'll come, he gave me some uh, morphine. And mm. it was uh, a lot, lot stronger. Okay. He also went to give me gas and air, but I didn't. And the pregnant women. Uh, oh, but I, I didn't like it uh, at all, so I wasn't having that. I had the morphine, and I was happy just keeping my hand submerged in this cold water, do you know, when then I could take it out, and, and a couple of minutes later, it started banging in, I put it back in. Yeah. So he had to clear me. He didn't call an ambulance. He said, I'll take you in the car. And he had one of these, um, you, you know, estate cars, or, or, or ambulance, paramedic, whatever, written up. And he had to clear, uh, clear the front seat off and that. So we got out, and, and Stacey's all upset, and I'm saying, no, don't worry, don't, I know what they're going to do, they're going to just give me some antibiotics, or whatever. I'll probably have to stay in 24 hours. I said, look, I'm not even, I was going in the clothes, up. I wouldn't say, you know, I'll bring everything with you, and whatnot, I just went out in the clothes I was wearing, and by the time I'd got to, he'd got to the end of the road, I'd fallen asleep, that's how good the, <laughs> the morphine was, okay, literally, by the time, you know, he pulled out my car park, got to the end, because he, he went, uh, straight across the road uh, at where he should have turned uh, right, which went to a dead end. And I thought we was there when I, I sort of felt cars come to a halt and then reverse because I thought, well, come we there. And I, I didn't need to look round. I could see, I could see my, my kitchen window. <laughs> you know, that's how far, that's how tired I was. So he gets to hospital. I see another doctor and the doctor don't even touch it. Uh, he says, go and wait in the waiting room. I said, fuck off. I said, that was one of the stipulations. I said, like, I'm, I'm not going to sit in casualty again for two hours. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it. He said, no, you won't need to because I'm bringing you in. Yeah. So you, you, you won't need to. So that, that, that was one of the other factors that made me laugh. So, so we went in. We went in the other entrance, not the um, uh, the peasant's entrance. We went in the posh entrance. Uh, see this doctor. So he said, like, go and wait in the waiting room. I said, you taking a piss or what? He said, it won't be long. It won't be. And, and the paramedic... He said, no, it won't be long. He, he was being all, all kind of nicey-nicey to me. It won't be long. Anyway, two hours later, they called me. And um, he didn't even look at it. It was another doctor. He didn't even look at it. He said, you've got to go to Chelmsford no! for emergency operation. And I, I never caught like, I, sh I should have done, but I was in too much pain. This was, uh, was it New Year's Eve or the night before? It, it, the night before. Yeah, well... It was the night before, and then we went into New Year's Eve while I was in at South End Hospital. So he said, without looking at it, he said, you're going to have to go to Chelmsford for an emergency. I said, why Chelmsford? He said, because they, they, cause it's on your hand. Um, South End Hospital hasn't got a, a plastic surgery unit. You need to go plastic surgery because of very dodgy operations on the hands because of all the um, tendons and whatnot. If you don't know what you're doing, you can end up paralysed. Well, fair enough. Uh, I know Chelmsford Hospital, and it's not in Chelmsford, it's in Broomfield, it's miles, miles out of the way. So I've got to ring to Stacey up and tell them I'm not coming home or whatever. I'm going to Chelmsford for an emergency operation by emergency ambulance. That's how serious it was. Uh -huh. And um, uh, she's having a go at me. She can't get down. It's New Year's Eve. We've got, we've got midnight now, so it was New Year's, Eve, uh, New Year's Eve. My birthday's on New Year's Day, incidentally. And um, I said, what, what can I do? She said, how am I going to get there? I said, you have to put a, a notice out on Facebook and, and, and can, can anyone like, sort of, you know, bring you, the, not then, but the next day, you know, to visit me sort of after the operation. And uh, so I was so tired. I was saying, morphine had kicked in. I, I'd, I'd got up to the front of Stacey showing me for being ill. And I was sitting in the chair. And I thought, I'm going to lay on the, on the you know, examining couch, you know. I lay down on the examining couch, and I must have fell asleep. Couldn't have been for long, because the nurse came in. She said, Chris, you've got to go and wait in the waiting room now. The emergency ambulance is coming for you. I said, oh, well, fair enough. I, I, 
you know, she said, it'd be there any minute. So I, I, I dragged myself back to casualty. And I sat there for another two hours. And I kept thinking, shall I go up with a fag? Shall I go up with a fag? No, no, baby, she said he's coming, he's coming. I just sat there for another couple. In and out of sleep, there was only me and the receptionist in there. New Year's Eve, or, or the morning, everyone must have been saving themselves for the evening, like the New Year's Eve evening, because there was no one, just me and the receptionist. And she wouldn't even glance at me, wouldn't even look at me. And I kept waking up, I was sitting in the front row. Never gave my message nothing. I uh, thought, sod this, it comes about uh, three o'clock, just four, three o'clock in the morning. I'm going for a fag. So I got up, and as I went to walk out the door, she said to me, the first thing she leave in time, first time she even acknowledged me, she said, I think the paramedics are here for you now. So I turned around to her and said, well, I'll just be right outside there. You'll even be able to see me. You'll see the light from my cigarette. I'm going for a fag and walked out. I'd been out there, I, 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 which was awful drop light in my fag, because I couldn't do nothing with my hand. OK, and my other hand, my left hand, I've got a trapped nerve in the elbow, which is sort of left out half paralysed. So it was a right, right palaver, just lying the fag. I didn't even finished it and I see two people walk out um, of the main doors, obviously paramedics, sort of look around. So I said, you're looking for me? I must be in the shadow. She said, Chris? I said, yeah. She said, we are indeed. She, so I went to put my fag out and she goes, no, 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 have it, have it. I'll have one with you. There's a woman and... and, and an oldish bloke. We was having a fag and we was chatting. It was all right, uh, having a nice little get together kind of thing. And she she explained to me. She said, "Do you know you, you you're lucky because um, we was just about to clock off. Five minutes later, we would have clocked off when we got the message through." So I thought, well, that, the nurse told me at least two hours earlier that, that you was on the way. She said, no, we've only just got a message. We come from Canva. We would have been home. She said, I only live in Watchford where, where I live. You know, live right near you, in, in Watchford. And she said, but now I've got to go back to Canva to get the car to come home, then come back home by, by 10 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, she drove the ambulance. She, she drove the emergency ambulance and, and the fellow come in the back with me. And how they work on patients, I don't know, uh, in the back, because it was like jumpy and bangy and rubby and... Uh, how we did fell. I was sitting in the fellow's seat, stepped in, you know, the seat specially designed for the fellow in the back, uh, and he was sort of sitting on the on the bed, uh, falling all over the place, and she was taking it easy. But anyway, I fell asleep again. Uh, next thing I know, I've been waking up at Chelmsford on four o'clock in the morning, admitted in there. Lovely woman, um, couldn't do more for me, more morphine given, different colour, different lot, different taste. And uh, he got, you know, took my history and whatnot, and, and said, "Oh, it's your birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday! Oh, yeah, really happy birthday." I said, "How long do you end up being here?" I said, oh, "24." She said, "No." She said, "The operation," and then she said, "It's hard to say." Turns out I had septicemia, which is one of the easiest things to spot. Okay, the, the, the symptoms are so common, and I had all of them. Yet four doctors had gone through and not acknowledged it. Okay, and I was left. The, the quicker they catch it, the better your chances, OK? Um, the longer you leave it, you end up losing your limbs all your life. Mm -hmm. And I think I was deliberately kept... I don't even know if that new doctor's still at my, my doctor's practice or not. But <clears throat> it's an arthritis, which was totally... You know, and I say, septicema is so <clears throat> easy to, um, to, to diagnose, you know, and the quicker you get it, the better it is. Of course, I'd, I'd been at least 24 hours too late by then. And uh, e even now, my finger's not right. But they took me down. I, I passed six they, 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 I was I was being wheeled into the, um, the theatre. Now, he, it had already been, the anaesthetist had already been to see me, and he said, we can do it two ways. We can give you a, a general anaesthetic and, and put you to sleep, or... You can, um, you, you know, have a local and the same. We arm will be numb, and, then, and, and we we can do it that way. So I said, yeah, that's the one, because obviously, um, because of who I am and what I know, I uh, don't like the idea of being put to sleep and not knowing what's going on. Mm. Yeah. So we 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 I'm I'm wheeling the theatre, and and the surgeon, he knew Rochford very well, funny enough, and, and he was right, like, Shay. And, Oh, yeah. I hadn't had a lot of sleep, but I only had you know an hour in the waiting room here, woken up, broken sleep, and what. But 
I was sort of looking forward to seeing this operation on my arm, on my hand. And what they do, what they explained is, is that they, they make an incision in your palm, the palm of your hand, and they make an incision at the end of the uh, the bad finger. They run a tube in, and because all, all the all the um, uh, tendons and whatnot, they're all, all, all pussified up. Okay, so yeah, that, that's all. And so it, it, they give me these, um, these these injections and whatnot. And, my arm had gone complete, and it really had gone. They'd done the pin test on it, couldn't fit. And it's weird, because you, you wouldn't believe how heavy your arm is, because I'm picking it up, and he's going, no, don't, don't pick it up, because if you drop it, it'll drop to your face, and, and, and you'll smash your face. And it was. And it's just such a weird feeling. Any, anyone who, who, who's had a part of their body numbed, totally, totally numbed, will know exactly what I'm talking about, because like with my other hand, I'm sort of lifting up. It feels like almost you're lifting, you know, them... Pig, pig's heads and what they have like the little short hairs on them that prick your fingers when you touch it. It was like that. You know? So anyway, then I'm, 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 I'm laid down, tired, but wide awake, wanting to watch this operation. And they built another table in, the, the, the sort of a narrow, narrow little table, which my arm was then pulled out over and taped to. So I was sort of, if you like, halfway on a cross, on half a cross. You understand what I mean? And then they, they could get either the doctors could get either side of this small table that mom was stretched out on and, and, and operated this delicate operation. So I said, I'm, I'm wait, looking forward to it. And they chatted to me and um, they said, we just give you something to relax you. Next thing, I'm being woken up in, in the recovery room. Now, I've had operation with general anaesthetic and I, I know what it's like coming around, you know, you sort of come out of the tunnel, yeah. You know, and it was just like, I, but I still didn't cut on them. I still didn't cotton on that things wasn't right here. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I mean, why, why would I say, I don't even remember falling asleep, but I thought, all right, I'll, I'll put it down. I was really tired, like, you know, and and, and I can sleep at the best of time because I don't get a lot. I could sleep standing up. In fact, my daughter can't believe how quickly I can fall asleep. Um, uh, do you know, so I'll, I'll put it down to that. Now, I was taken up to a ward and, and I was still in my clothes, you know, um, and then, you know, they didn't offer me a hospital gown or nothing. They put me on this bed and I couldn't, I couldn't, I was, I had like half a plaster cast on it and mine was bandaged up and, and, and in a sling. And I said, my, my left hand is useless anyway because of the trap now. I couldn't reach nothing. And the bed was so on such a slope, I slipped to the bottom. And never, I had to stay there. I didn't have no blankets. It was freezing cold. And, and I, I couldn't reach the, um, the you know, the, the call button. And I had all these drips on me and whatnot, so I, I, which was all attached to plug sockets. I couldn't even, I couldn't even get up. It's gone off. I'm still there, Chris. I am. Yeah, you went off. Oh, Jason's no. gone off. One of you. No, no I, I'm still on. No, we're all both still on. We can well, still hear you fine. We can hear your daughter faintly yeah, in the background. Moaning, moaning, <laughs> moaning about the weed dealers. Um, so I couldn't even get up. I, 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 was, I was just so I was on the ward with other people, and I didn't want to like be shouting and waking them up and saying, "Can you get someone for me?" And that, so I just suffered it. I just the bottom of this bed, like in a heap, you know, uh, and I had to wait until someone came around and decided to see me. Now, apart from one nurse, everyone was really horrible to me. It was almost like they'd been told I'm a rapist. Uh, do you know? I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't even cut it at the time, but no one would speak to me. Uh, everyone was giving me full fit. I said, "Just when she came out, when you got it, you know, what have I done wrong? <laughs> what, what, what have I said? Was I fighting a lot or something? Do you know?" <laughs> uh, and the nurses, everyone, they come out and they look at me like a bit of shit. Uh, I went for a wee, which was a major job with my arm in the cast and, and the other arm, yeah, uh, and, and, and a drip trolley with me and that. Uh, I, I went for a wee, and it just so happened the breakfast came round while I was having a wee. But she didn't stand to wait for me, or, or didn't put me on. You only get a choice of toast or cornflakes anyway. Leave me something. She went, and they wouldn't have come back had I not said, well, I didn't get my breakfast, dear. I said, oh, didn't you? As if they didn't know. All uh, right. And that happened a couple of times. With me. And what I was getting was, was such tiny portions. Anyway, the doctor came round, had a look at it, and said, you have to have another operation, um, which, which I was doing the next day, New Year's Day, my, my, my birthday. So 
when well, so I still hadn't cottoned on because I thought, you, you know, how can anyone, even with their technology, can they make my finger go bad? Do you know? So I still hadn't cottoned on that everything wasn't kosher. Mm -hmm. So by this time, I'd, I'd done nothing but sleep, but I couldn't have slept if I, if I, you know, um, wanted to. So oh, well, I'm going to watch the operation. All right. Yeah. So in we went. It was a different surgeon. Numb my hand up, uh, or my arm up, and it was numb again. I couldn't feel a thing, did the prick test and everything. Next thing, I'm, I'm woke up, and I had an awful job waking me up, okay? But I could hear them calling me, Chris, wake up, Chris, wake up, Chris, wake up. All right? But I could not wake up. I couldn't wake up. I, I, I was so groggy and, and, and whatnot. They wheeled me back to the ward, and, and Stacy, Stacy had been there with someone who, the woman who gave Stacy a lift, I was there, uh, and, and, and Stacey was there. They'd been there when they took me down. I think, well, how long was it? About an hour and a half. Well, or something like that. About an hour and a half in, in, in three hours. And they left after an hour because they couldn't get a, um, a sensible word. I just kept falling asleep, and, and when I was awake, I was just talking shit, apparently. Now, how can that be with a local anaesthetic? Yeah, well, a local anaesthetic, it's, it's not supposed to... Even I know, I, grubby, I know. I, I've, I've, I've had four or five operations in my life, uh, and, and I know what waking up from a general anaesthetic feels like, and this is exactly what it felt like, but a heavy dose of general anaesthetic, say, because I, I, I could hear people, but I couldn't take it in, you know, and, and I just couldn't wake up. And um, But still, I never calmed on. Don't be a fuck me, I'm telling you. Uh, I just I just wanted to go home because everyone was being so horrible to me. Um, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I preferred to get exactly. You know, I just went and they they was coming out and said you might need a third operation. I said no, 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 no. I've had all the operations on my way and on my way home. So they said we've got to get these and and they could have been pumping anything through me because they was changing them all the time. I got no idea what they was pumping through my body. But. Um, I, I, I was meant to be first on the list and ended up over 24 hours with no food or drink because I was meant to be on the first on the list and they took me down last. Okay? Things like that. And then when I come out, I was so hungry, I, I was almost begging for food. Uh, and they promised they'd get it. In the end, uh, two hours later, I, was, I got a sandwich, an egg sandwich. And, uh, no drink, I had to drink water. I'm dying for a cup of tea, I was a light tea. I don't drink alcohol. But still, I didn't call on. So the doctors come round um, after the fifth day, you know, fifth day, I think it was, and, and, and she said, she had a look at it, and she said, you're going to need another operation. I said, oh, no, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going home. I'm going home. I said, you just give me the papers to sign now. I sign them. I'm going home. Now, I've, I've done this before on, on, on two major operations, like about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so whether it was on my record that when I say I'm going home, I'm going home, uh, or what, I don't know, but she didn't argue. She just said, OK, fair enough. So she's gone from, you need an, uh, another operation to, fair enough, you're going home, no problem. All right. She said, just, you, you just got to wait. She said, I'll, 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 I'll fill in all the paperwork. And she said, you got to wait for the uh, pharmacist to get your painkillers and whatnot. So that was about three or four hours, wasn't it? Instead, you'd managed to get someone else to give her a lift, uh, and and the poor chap, we just we just we just left him in the car park, and, and she kept having to go back and said, yeah, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, but they took about three hours. How did it take three hours just to get you know uh, tablets and whatnot yeah. from the pharmacy? Don't believe it. Don't believe me for a word. Anyway, um, I'd just like to say, Chris. I mean, I've, I've been in hospital recently, and and when they do send for your tablets from pharmacy i've often popped back the day after um i've been discharged just to get the tablets because it does take that long but yeah i can't understand I known, what you're saying had i known i, I would have done the same uh, yeah. i wasn't in no pain at, at the time and you know um and i i i, I, I would have done the same but they didn't they kept saying no they're coming they're coming won't be long now won't be long now for three hours they stayed me along and, so and you, my mum was in the car park but do you, do you think that was to try and keep you there so that they could uh, persuade it, you? It was, it was just to, to, to piss me off. It seemed everything was done to piss me off. Even though I'd done nothing, I hadn't shouted at anybody. I hadn't even been rude. To, I hadn't even spoken to anybody. But it was like 
everybody, it's like they've been told you've got a rapist coming or a child molester's coming in. Uh, you, you mustn't, you mustn't hurt him, but don't, don't interact with him. It was like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, it, 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 it was, I, I, I uh, apart from one nurse who, who must have, uh, whatever they was fucking told about me, must have felt for it and, and, and treated me like a human. I've never been treated so bad. You know, I say, even if my arm had been dropping off, I would have gone home. Even if it had been hurting like it was when I first went in, I would have gone home because <laughs> I'm not, you know, I, was, I was probably being bullied and, and I wasn't in a position to do anything about it. I had a drip um, in, in one hand. Uh, we, 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 you know, well, I was having so like my dolly friend, and and and, and the other one in plaster cast. What, you know, I couldn't have done anything to anybody anyway. So, um, uh, I, I went home and um, then went in my staff physiotherapy, and I still had the stitches. And even the stitches was weird. And I've had stitches in my face and everywhere, and I've taken them out myself oh, a few days, no problem. These ones, they, they came. There was like blue plastic almost, like you know. Uh, might be Luffy. I'm not saying there's anything you suspect about. I'm just saying what they was. They they was. Uh, I, I kept catching them <clears throat> with, with with my other finger or, or my thumb, and it hurt because there was all, because they're like plastic, little thin plastic, almost like little plastic needles. They was. It took them three weeks to get them out, which they should have been taken out after two, and it absolute came. Now I say I've taken them stitches out myself in my face, um, just cut them out and pull them out. You know, little tickle, no problem whatsoever. These are going, well, what the fuck are you doing? You know, when, when, when he was pulling them out, because it, it was absolute agony. And I had like these, well, I've still got them. I've managed to cut a few of them out now, in my finger and now. They're like little white strings behind them uh, that, that feel like, you know, when you get a, a splinter in your finger uh, or whatever, and you, and you touch that, it doesn't hurt until you touch something with it, and then it gives you uh, that horrible feeling of the splintery feeling, you know? Yeah, it was like 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 that in my hand with all these things, and, and I was trying to get you know pull them out and that, and and, and just to, as soon as I touched them, agony, absolute agony. My finger wouldn't move. I went to physiotherapy. He must have thought like, I'd muppet it on my head. It okay, me. I thought, that's the last time I'm coming to see you ever, mate. Well, I'm just getting a bit of a uh, bit of movement back in it now. It doesn't bend right, uh, but I, I managed to cut all them. Apart from one, which got like a little lump, I don't know. They they they, they weren't the stitches because the stitches were blue, blue plasticky. These was I don't know. There was like a white string that uh, I managed to cut out and and it seized up a bit. But when I put it all together, I said I'm falling asleep when I shouldn't have been falling asleep. The um, you, you know the the way I was being treated in there and and oh I know they're busy in there and and I but I wasn't even asked. But they was just. And what hostile to me, do you know? For, Hello, mate, you all right? Uh, Granddad's talking, look. Come see me. And, and I'd done nothing wrong, you know? I didn't I didn't ask to go for the operation or whatever, uh, but I wasn't... I didn't hinder anybody. I didn't, um, uh, you know, make their job difficult. Whatever they asked me to do, I did. They also, another funny thing, while I was at South End waiting for the emergency ambulance that took over two hours to come, they put uh, a cannula in my hand with all the tubes on and he said he was doing it <laughs> I don't know who that is that's nothing to do with me whatsoever mate or me I have no idea what's happening here ah we sorted it yes that, sorry that was that was me somehow inadvertently playing the song it was the scrotum song sorry about that guys that's, that's all right. <laughs> Scrotum song. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> funny, 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 funny. You're listening. Um, what, what was I saying? Well, uh, you were you were telling us about how it seems that there seemed to have been, at, at the very least, some sort of whispering campaign. Oh yeah, um, no. I so said they put his cannula in South End Opera, uh, South End Hospital before while I'm waiting for the emergency ambulance. And no cannulas. I used to use them for piercing and whatnot. I know that. The, they're pence, they're peanuts, they don't cost nothing, right? Uh, but he had to get put his cannula and he flushed it through. Uh, God knows what he flushed it through with, I don't know. You know, you just uh, not, he obviously, man, it was just normal sleep, but he could have... Why would they put a cannula in when I was still, you know, two or three hours away from the operation and it takes seconds, seconds to put a cannula in, do you know? Yeah. 
but it, 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 they did it. I, I didn't. I didn't think. Didn't cotton on uh, that, that something was was not right. Because when I got there, when I went into um, the operating theatre, he took it out and put them and, and went. Oh, the kind of shit work they do at South End these days. Uh, because he couldn't get it to work. So what did he flush me through with? Yeah, you know? I, I, we 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 really have to stress that. I mean, none of us are, are medically trained, and we don't we have got no idea about the procedures that that are in place. But yeah, it does seem to be. Um, well, can, we, sorry, cannula it, 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 it takes seconds to put in if you know what you're doing. It you know, does push absolutely. Push it into a vein and put a bit of tape around it. And why what, did it have to be done at South End when when you know we're sort of dangling from my hand, uh, picking up any old kind of shit along the way from you know South End to Chelmsford. And, and in between, why, why, why do it when it's not necessary? Do you know? And yeah. Well, when it, you say it, about it's like, it's like buy, go, you're going to paint a, uh, paint a portrait or something, so you buy um, a, a portrait miles and miles away from where you're going to paint it, uh, even though you've got you know canvases at, uh, at where you're going to paint it. It was a pointless episode. Yeah, well, on and the subject of what, what, what did he flush it through with? Yeah. Pointless procedures, Chris. Um, many years ago, when I was quite a big drinker, um, when I was uh, worse for wear, I fell over and bashed my head in. And I went to hospital and I had to have stitches in my forehead. And a few days later, when uh, my ex-wife was taking these stitches out, I said, hang on, there's six stitches there but only four of them are in the wound. The other two are completely... There was about three inches away from the wound. I said, what's that about? She said, oh, that's just a little joke. That's what we do to people who are a pain in the arse when they come in drunk. <laughs> I wasn't a pain in the arse. I must stress this. I was in too much pain. They could have had me, you know, made me stand on my head naked and I would have complied. I was in that much pain. But the thing is, now, I didn't know that I had septicemia. No one told me. I, it was someone else who sent me all the symptoms and, and, and the procedure uh, for, for treating septicemia, OK? And what that, this was obviously taken from a surgeon's um, manual, <laughs> do-it-yourself manual or whatever, you know, because all, all, all um, uh, doctor talk, if you like. But the procedure, they, they, they make like a Z incision in your palm of your hand and then the incision uh, in your whichever infected finger it was in, in my case you know the, the one next to my little finger they made that on the, <clears throat> on the end joint okay right right where it bends they, they, they make that but my incision isn't a z it's a pyramid <laughs> oh dear yeah um there's a comment in the RN chat room from Carrots there, Chris, and uh, the comment says, in inverted commas, five have control in those NHS hospitals. If they want you gone, well, dot, 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 dot. I presume exactly. that's referring to MI5. Exactly. And, and, and this is why I didn't want to be put out. Why I, I, I said, you know, I thought, well, at least I can see what they're doing. And, I was quite interested to see what he was doing, you know, but I, I couldn't feel it. I'm not squeamish or anything like that. I'm a uh, tattooist for 20 years, so uh, I'm not squeamish. And um, I was looking forward to seeing it twice. And twice I was out like a light, and, and the second time I, said, I couldn't come around at all, just like I'd had too much uh, of a general anaesthetic. Why? Why? And when you put it all together, a shape incision in my part, I've got, I've got a pyramid incision in my hand. Um, and, and all these, you know, funny things sticking out, even after they take, killed me to have the stitches, take, absolutely killed me. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and, and, and I can take a bit of pain, trust me on that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not your, uh, normal wimpy patient. Well, anybody who's seen your tattoos, Chris, should know that you're fairly well able to tolerate a bit of pain. Well, exactly. And, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I said, whoa, what are you doing? And he said, don't, don't be a wimp. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I did consider twatting him at that stage, you know? <laughs> I know the feeling, yeah, yeah. But I put, and every single one he took out, uh, it, it, you know, they, they cut them before they, and then they pull them with the tweezers. The cutting weren't no problem, but pulling them out, absolutely agony it was. And then, I, I, once again, I'll put it down to, well, maybe, shh, shh, 
they, they, they should have been out a week earlier. <laughs> you tell them, mate. You tell them. <laughs> and uh, the whole thing, when now that I'm home and whatnot, and put it all together from from the uh, telling me I had arthritis and, and, and telling me that I had crushed uh, blood vessels in it, you know. Um, so I went 24 hours longer than what I should on, on something that's easy to spot and easy to treat if it's caught early enough. If it's not caught early enough, you, you can end up very dead very quickly or with no arms and no legs, you know. Yeah, so um, the CBS is a poisoning of the blood, isn't it? It's, poison, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. associated with meningitis quite a lot, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, and then... The, I say both wanting to watch the operations, but but being asleep uh, before they even, <clears throat> you know, so much as cut into them. And the way that I was treated, I was treated like shit. You know, no covers, I was freezing cold. Couldn't reach the the, 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 the button to call anybody. And, uh, and the bed was up on such a slope that I, I ended up just doing a, a pile of fucking shit on the bottom of the bed, you know? And when you add it, put it all together... You think that's not right there? And all the things that they could have pumped anything through me. Anything. So even put a cannula in that's out there. Why did they do that? Why did the nurse tell me to go and sit in the waiting room? Uh, they, they, you know, they, they're on their way now. Emergency ambulance. Yet two hours later, uh, they, they turn up and they wasn't on their way at all. But I had made, I had said to the paramedic when he came <coughs> and took me, I said, I'm not going down there if I'm going to be waiting in the waiting room for two hours. Well, like, I'm the entertainment for everybody. And he said, he won't be. And well, yeah, but it's almost like, oh, well, so you think you're not sitting in the waiting room? We'll show you. You are sitting in the waiting room. Do you know? Yeah, just, it just seemed like it would just to, um, to, to, find to me put up, you out. Find me up. But in the meantime, I was on all these, these, these drips that, that required plugging in uh, to sockets and whatnot. Uh, and... I, got, I ain't got a clue what they, they put on. Do you know, I could, I could have all manner of shit in my body now that, that, that that's going to develop into cancer in, in a couple of months' time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a big say. danger. Um, Chris, I've just noticed we've uh, just run past the two-hour mark. Uh, do you want to take a brief music I, break? I'm, I'm fine, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm normally sitting on my own, just typing, I'm lonely, so... You can be my new friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, well, if we just have one record, uh, give me a chance to just go in quickly. Yeah, a chance to freshen up, make it brew, whatever you want. And let's have uh, one from our friends who are listening out in Spain, but they can't get in the chat room tonight. It's Ken and Susie, also known as Bedrock. Enjoy. And welcome back to Raconteurs News. Where we've certainly got an explosive that, that, start that's not to our... flying, by the way. So, we... <laughs> thanks, Chris. We've certainly got an explosive start to our first show on our own platform here. Um, we're joined, Jason and I, are joined tonight by Chris Spivey. Yeah, and yeah. wow, he's been turning our minds inside out and upside down and sending us some photographs which have been uh, uploading to Facebook. I've already got quite a few comments on them. And um, there's quite a bit of interest there, Chris. There's some real stuff here in the... Yeah, sorry, Chris. I just had to just interject and say there's some re real explosive stuff here. I mean, there's, there are things as well that we that we can't really share. But, yeah, I mean, this is this is all good stuff. Yeah, carry on. It, it, it is. It's very, very... very and I can't... You know, I, I don't want to come off across as a drama queen, but very, very dangerous stuff. Very, yeah. very dangerous. And... and, and well, I say, you know, I've admitted, and I know people think, oh, shall I get over yourself, you know, but um, you, you want to try beating me, and, 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 and what I've had for Halle, tried to steal my grandchild, uh, Halle had made me in the file, um, uh, how I was illegally arrested twice, um, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> my prosecutor, um, is also, also plays um, the father of a 77 victim, you know, so uh, it's all very well saying, get over yourself. Yeah, I know that I am in real danger right now. And the, the, the thing is, where do you go? Who can you trust? <clears throat> because this is so people that I wouldn't think capable of, 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 of doing this kind of shit. You know, I thought was legit, totally had me fooled. Um, uh, I turned out to be uh, the enemy, so to speak, you know. And they don't even know 
the line low, look at the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, we've actually been joined in the chat room by uh, a guy who's been on the show several times before, and that's our old friend Bernie Gad. And uh, it looks like um, Bernie's been doing a bit more digging. He's posted in the chat room. James Shackleton killed Jill Dando. Hamish Campbell covered it up and framed Barry George. Campbell is now the Deputy Commissioner of Police in Jamaica. Campbell, the, work, fixer, Campbell the fixer when needed. Uh, it could be, well, but um, Dando's fiance, Alan Farvin, will say, if you've had a doubt, I know maybe the photos I haven't sent you, um, they're, they're not the best ones to have sent you. Um, to, to, to shed a light. And, and I'm going to need to take. <coughs> well, I've already taken screenshots from the, the uh, of them talking on videos where you can see as they move where they change. You know where 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 their lower half. But you look at the look into the eyes. Look around the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 is where the giveaway um, sort of comes in. But uh, Alan Farthing, he, he was um, he was well, he's a Queen's gynaecologist now, um, uh, apparently, but he was also responsible for um, um, uh, Prince George. Didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he uh, just deliver the latest frog that they've just had? Um, yes, he did. And, so, so, yeah. so, he, yeah, he so, delivered that, didn't he? Yeah. Supposedly. Now you got to, if you're Princess Diane, that's where he gets even deeper. If Princess Diane didn't really exist, apart from in photographs and and the odd public appearance by um, a lookalike, where does that leave Prince William? And the answer to that is Prince William doesn't exist either. And um, the, the bird he's married to, Kate Gugga Smith, she's an actress, um, without a doubt. And Harry, actually, Harry does exist. Harry is, um, I think he, 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 he's, he's a very close relation. Um, there's actually pictures, photographs of them together, Gingerhead Boy, um, St. Bradford rings the bell, the Earl of Bradford or something like that. He is. I mean, he, he looks remarkably like James Hewitt, doesn't he? He, 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 I don't think he is he, James Stewart. So I say, uh, he also, uh, I've got a picture, uh, which I've already released, of Diana kissing someone who looks like she's kissing Harry, but it's not his brother. He, he, he does look amazingly like uh, Earl Spencer. But I say, he's not, he's, um, I have no doubts whatsoever that he is. Uh, and I can't remember his bleeding name. The, the Earl of Bradford or something. He went to a wedding with me. I say there's pictures of them together. I'll, I'll try and get you one up uh, of, of when they was little, like you know. Um, Kate, Kate Goldiggs, me. She, she, she's just an actress. I sent you a photo of her here. Let's just get this open. And they're all fake. Once again, I'll, I'll challenge anyone. Send me a photo of. of, of Kate and William, and I'll show you where it's photoshopped. Right. Now, I had this a little while before I even knew this, uh, of the um, the christening of Charlotte and um, the Sunday church visit, a couple of articles I've done. Well, I said, well, these are fake photos. The, uh, the duck and, uh, or Philip, if you want, I'll call him the duck, the duck and the queen arriving at the, uh, the, the, the Royal Horse Show, whatever it is, in the coach. I said, I put it out, the article's still on the sign. I said, these photos are Photoshop. They're not really there. Look, they're not really. And I showed you where they wasn't really there. And it, I didn't know why they were photoshopping uh, the, the Queen and, and, and the um, Duke of Edinburgh. Arrival, you, you, why wasn't they really arriving at the place? And, and I couldn't understand that. And now I understand. And when you think there was millions upon millions upon millions of pounds being spent um, in royal protection, overseas visits, and that. If they're not really taking place, someone's pocketed And that's what it's all about. Oh, shit. So I'm trying to... Uh, my, 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 my computer really is being naughty. Computers are like that, aren't they, at times? Um, my mind has been for the past few days. Um, well, enough. Um, right, now we've got that one. Here we go. Here's a, a photo of Kate. And now you wouldn't see Kate doing that normally, would you? 
Uh, very interesting. I know <laughs> people can't see this. Uh, <laughs> I know people can't see this at home. But, I've just uh, seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't see Kate doing that, would you? You, you wouldn't think you would, but, you know, you, you're I've sort got, of I've hoping got, sometimes. I've got more of them. Um, uh, wasn't there a, a huge outcry a couple of years ago in one of the newspapers got a picture of Kate Topless? I got like them, a... yeah, that, that, that's what put me on the road, actually. <laughs> um, because everyone uh, sort of panicked, had a little panic about it and, and, and took them down, and didn't they? Uh, when they were trying to, I didn't panic, I kept my nerve, and, and, kept, and I was only one of the two websites that kept them up, and um, uh, that, that, that sort of got me noticed. Uh, so, uh, really, I have Kate's tits to thank for where I am today. The predicament I'm in today, shall I say. Just, uh, mm. here we go. There you <laughs> go. A couple more coming through. Now I'm just beginning to feel like a sordid old man. I didn't say this photo is unavailable. <laughs> it wasn't a second ago. Yeah, it's not not exactly what you'd um, you'd expect for um, for future future queen. There you go. It's through now. Now tell me that's not Kate. Yeah. This is um, uh, I send you through um, Prince Harry um, a couple of days after his mother supposedly um, died. You know uh, when when they went to look at the flowers and that twelve year old boy, his mother's just been killed in a car crash and and, and whatnot. Yeah, he certainly hasn't got the look of a, a, a grieving 12-year-old boy. So they went it? to the church the morning, and they were supposedly told at 3 o'clock in the morning that their mother had died, been killed at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they was going to church on Balmoral. Makes no sense whatsoever. And, 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 and not a tear in sight. Yeah. That people say, oh, if, if Diana would still be alive, they'd have turned out differently. Would they bollocks? Yeah. Happy as Larry. Uh, my mother's dead. Did you hear? Yes, I mean the the old saying is grief does strange things to people, and that, we all that, take that, it that's differently. How, how the uh, <laughs> that, that, that's exactly what he should say. Funny, you know? uh, you, well, everyone acts different. Everyone acts different. They fucking do in these cases. Yeah, that's that's for sure. <laughs> I say you you, you 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 never seen anyone. I mean. <laughs> These people would never be able to get that close to, to Harry anyway, but it's almost like a 12-year-old boy is, is, is comforting people who supposedly didn't even know her. Now, that's, that's not... That's not be, uh, but I say, Harry is, is semi-legit in, in so much that he is... Um, Illegitimate. <laughs> well, he... he, he, he he, he's sort of connected to the royals loosely. Um, I, I can't, and I can't remember his name. Uh, so, is the Queen an actress? I don't know. I haven't been able to find that. I, I tend to think that the Queen isn't, but she isn't the Queen. As such. I mean, anyone would tell you that, that, that you, you know she's a fraud. They are frauds on the throne. They're not entitled to be on the throne. Yeah. But I tend to think that the Queen is um, a, a, a person, yes. One single uh, person, rather than... Um... But, but rather than multiple... Uh, yeah, rather than multiple personalities. But um, well, I, I I'm some... not sure about Prince Charles, and I'm not sure about Camilla. I'm definitely... Here is... Um, uh, a fellow called James Max. He, he's Prince Andrew, or Princess Andrew, who, as you know, is a paedophile. You don't hang around with paedophiles if you're not a paedophile. This is true. I mean, no, but they all. Why would you even to the gap of the team? Yeah, chunkier you version. See, but... you, you see, you see the them. Don't say that. You, you, you might want to drop that first because I don't want them to know that I'm onto them. But the, the name above it, 
is, is, is multiple personalities and, and supposedly a champion of the uh, abused, which okay. yeah, but they are is keepers of the faith, not. Which is why they get twenty-four hour protect, protection. A, a, exactly, exactly, and, and if anyone needs twenty-four, I need twenty-four hour protection, but it's only twenty-four hours protection from the public, only twenty-four hours protection from the, uh, the the security services and whatnot. You know, make uh, a failure. That no people are available. Uh, this is really, really dangerous time. There's some uh, of how the Diana photos are faked, um, and as you can, as you see. You look at the face, it isn't even Diana. Um, it, 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 it's a look alike. And, and when you think, well, Salem was saying that three or four, um, or, or so that, you know, the, 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 um, the mainstream media will happily admit that, that they use body doubles. What makes you think that, that we're very different? I mean, we are, we are <laughs> probably the most oppressive um, nation outside America, uh, on Earth, you know, yeah. all, all, all they seem to do is, is slag other countries down, like North Korea and whatnot. And when, then you, you start to think, well, is it bullshit? Because, like, we haven't got freedom. Anyone who thinks they're free is killing themselves uh, to a large, larger stand. I've got some pictures of Barry George here. Uh, come out. And I so, say, Barry George is, is, is the mundo that, without, uh, hmm. without shadow of doubt. There's a great comment there from Bernie in the chat room. He's just said, interbreeding breeding causes mental illness, so all royals are mad. <laughs> That's but, it. Well, well no, no, but this is true. This is, I mean, that, that, that um, film a few years back, King's Speech, that won all the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, Total, total bollocks. Uh, yeah. Do you know, he, he was um, uh, retarded. Yeah. Yeah, I read it on a site somewhere um, about about um, about him, yeah, and, and that, that um, film was just propaganda, basically. I think it was your site, actually. It might have been one of your articles. It probably was. Here's a picture of uh, Barry George now, a recent picture of Barry George. Okay. Coming through. And it, I'll, send you a, I'll send you a picture of... Uh, Roland Rat, not the Roland Rat, the, um, the, 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 the head paparazzi, if you like, the one who was made out to be the, the pantomime villain. Well, you see, I don't think that there's a lot of years sort of passed by since the photos was taken. No, that's interesting because, um, you, you, I said, Barry, talk... George, Barry George, uh, ties in with Alan Farvey, and 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 and, and Jill Dando and Jill Dando and Diana and all, all the, everything links together. See everything. Same characters, which would figure you you can't these, these things have to be kept. You're not meant to know. You're not meant to know that the Ramondo Rat is, is Barry George. Yeah. Yeah, we've lost Chris again. It does seem. Uh... <laughs> They just seem to be having a bit of interference with his Skype there. I'm talking to him perfectly clearly. It doesn't fade in and out. It just goes. It does, yeah. Oh, are you back with us now, Chris? I'm back, yeah. There you go. Barry George and run some comparisons. I've just had a look at that, and the this, the similarity is uncanny, yeah. And don't forget, that they're, 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 they're trying to look different to each other anyway, do you know? But yet yeah. you, can still, uh, you can still see... The, the, they're the same person. Yeah. And and I say when when you watch uh, that in, in interview talking about Diana, uh, and he muddies the wars because he said he was the first to her. But then we hear that, that this Doctor Malines or whatever how you pronounce it, he was the first to her. Do you know? And, and well, who was the first to her? Uh, so someone's lying. So somebody's asked in the chat room. Does he mean? Um... Does he mean the actor that played the voice of Roland Rat? It, 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 no, 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 no. Roland Rat. His name is it's a French name, Ramundo or something like Ramundo. Okay. And and his last name is spelled Rat, R A T, but right. it's pronounced apparently Ra. So he's oh. Ramundo Ra, but it, the name is there to 
so you associate it with Roland Rat, so you remember. So in people's minds, they know, oh yeah, Raimondo Rat, Roland, yeah, and, and they remember that he's the baddie, he's the reason that Princess Diana's dead. You understand? Right. And I say this is it's all world association, like um, the, the in, in the Paris terrorist attack at, at, at the Batman uh, Club. Yeah. So who didn't think of the Batman Club? So people remember it in their head for years to come, and 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 then they associate with the Eagles' death metal, and and it, it reinforces the. Um, so it's subliminal association. Oh, good, good. Exactly, exactly. Because, and I say, at, at the time, in 1997, Roland Rat was massive on telly. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what, what are the heads of the paparazzi, no, the man who who got blamed for it? What would the odds of his called Ramundo Ra, or spelt Rat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I, I, it, 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 I was making a so, comparison to, um, in 94, in 1994, when Ayrton Senna was killed, um the day before, there was a, um, a, a, a driver that was killed in practice, and he was called Roland Ratzenberger. That's right, I remember exactly. that. Yeah, and, and just, that. That's when you gave me that, when you said Roland Rat, that I instantly thought Roland Ratzenberger, so a subliminal association there. Uh, his, his name's Ramon Ra, or something like that, Ramon Ra. Um, oh, but t- you it, 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 how can Rat, you know, it, 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 this picture's got his name on it, um, so you, you want to try. But it, uh, 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 as a presenter pointed out, his last name's pronounced Var. Uh, <laughs> Roland Vat. It's like Alan Bastard. Yes, I wonder if exactly. you should. I wonder if you should play out with um, Ken's other record, Ra's in the Council. <laughs> They're all over the place. They, 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 they are all over you. You, this is what I said to you right at the beginning. There's a lot less people involved in this big thing than, than you, you think because they all play multiple characters. You know, not, not, not just a few. Um, here's, here's another. Uh... Well, you, we've got a comment there from Jeff in the chat room, and he say, uh, in reference to Barry George, uh, why has he got no compensation? Because he was locked away for years for something he it's clearly all, didn't all, do. It's all bullshit. Don't take no no use of that whatsoever. Man. I tell you, it's put out as a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Okay. To, to keep people arguing, you got to look past that. Now I've got a list that has got Barry George, uh, uh, a list of people involved in satanic uh, sacrifice and. Um, uh, Satanic rituals, you know, you know and, and Barry George is on there. Um, there's quite a few world famous names on there. And the list is on my website, as it happens. Um, so, you know, even well, well, he was innocent, but he wasn't innocent not to make the list, you know. So, how innocent is innocent? It's a, a stinking, stinking cesspit. And they're all involved. So Nicholas Arsoff, he is also Ramondo Vat. Yeah, uh, we've got another comment from Bernie, Bernie Gad again in the chat room, and he said um, that regarding Farthing, who's now the Royal Pediatrician, he changed his statement about seeing Jill's killer and was rewarded with this consultancy. And he's now gynecologist to the Royal Family. So and, uh, the, the Royal Family's a lot, um, a lot further on the ground. Than, than, than what you'd think. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure the Queen is, is the Queen, although she's not meant to be the Queen, and the Duke of um, uh, Edinburgh is the Duke of Edinburgh. Not sure about Charles, and, and Diana was definitely, definitely um, not. There, there is not a single photograph of Charles and Diana that hasn't been photoshopped somewhere. Not one single one. <laughs> so you, you send them to me and, and I'll point out exactly where it is photoshopped. Well, that nasty old man that's playing the Duke of Edinburgh, um, everyone says, oh, yeah, Phil the Greek, and they say he's Greek, but he's not, he's Danish, isn't he? He, 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 he was, um, he, he's actually German, or German um, origin, but he was born um, uh, to the, the, the Greek, into the Greek royal family. Um, uh, uh, but he, he, he's dead. Uh, although I'm at pains once again to point out you cannot um, put too much store 
by what is, is put out because they all, all, the, all the conspiracy theories they were all put out by the people who wanted and it could be the same but supposedly uh, his dad was bisexual um, who, who ran off to Monte Carlo um, and, and left him in the uh, the hands of the uh, Mount Battens. His mother was a, an, an, an nutcase who, who, who was um, sectioned uh, and, and, and then became a nun, do you know? And, uh, that, that that that's all a matter of of history, but you can't. It, it could be just a, a a story put out there, just to everything is done to confuse and, and keep you in a state of confusion all the time. Okay, all these um, the the the, the big um, row between Mohammed Al Fayed, who doesn't really exist, and and the royal family, total bollocks, total total bollocks. And I've got photos of the Queen and and Mohammed Al Fayed. Uh, couldn't look happier to see each other, you know. But it's put out by them to think, oh yeah, well that that's that's why you know uh, Mohammed Al Fayed is right. He he um, uh, they they did kill Diana. They murdered Diana. They didn't murder. Her. They want people to either believe the, the the drunk driving thing or the the murder theory on the orders of the royal family. Uh, and I fell for it hook line and think as well. Uh, yeah, you know because it was perfectly plausible, but they put that conspiracy theory out there to keep people from the The real truth is, did the accident take place? No, it didn't. And I claim, Mohammed al Fallah, I claim my million pound uh, reward because I can prove to you that the accident didn't happen. Whether there was a car there or not. I also claim my reward for uh, Madeleine McCann as well, because um, uh, I know where Madeleine McCann is. Well, I don't know the exact location, but I know who Madeline McCann is. Um, so I claim my reward. In fact, I'm, I'm going to be a multi-millionaire with all these rewards that I'm now eligible for. Yeah, you might you might even be able to uh, put a, a claim in, a legitimate claim in for the uh, for the throne. Yeah, well, uh, I should think so. I should think oh, oh, that, that, that saying, if I have seen further than others, it's because I've been standing on the shoulders of giants. I don't know no fucking giants. Just hard work, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, how long did you say um, before your this Diana article comes out, and what do you think the implications of it coming out could be, um, both personally and and sort of like amongst the community of, of your readers? I think I'll be invested. Um, I think they'll try to um, put an injunction in against it. I think that's what I am. And if I if I'm arrested. Uh, I'm, I'm already on a, a suspended uh, sentence for trumped-up charges. That'll get me uh, confined, and, and then I'll be fed all kind of shit. The future isn't bright, and the future isn't orange, and they like orange a lot. But you've got to yes, do it. You need to turn your mic on, Andy. It's, it's got to be done. What do you do? Did you, you know, did you walk away from it? If... If I'd have known when I started, I'd be quite honest now, because people piss me right off. You know, they can't see what's you know right in front of them, and even when they can, they choose to do nothing about it. Let's get right. Now, sort of three or four years down the line, knowing what I do now, I sometimes wish I'd have kept quiet about it, and, and, and just because it, it's caused me nothing but uh, aggravation. Um, you know, my family and whatnot, they, they try to take away my little uh, grandson um, just to punish me for, you know, putting the truth. Out. And they're, they're prepared to, to you know, uh, hurt children and whatnot. I mean, these children are posing as Madeleine McCann and, 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 and Sarah Payne. They know that they're posing as Madeleine, Madeleine McCann and Sarah Payne. You know, the, the social services should be knocking on their fucking door, mate, not mine. Not mine. They're the one, you know, um, what is it? They, 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 they take children away now on the um, future emotional uh, harm. Yeah. Well, you only got to look at the whole family's door, mate. Uh, even if they existed, that little George who is uh, the same um, as William, as I proved in another art before I knew all this, um, who is in danger of emotional, future emotional harm? Absolutely. Certainly not my grandson. 
Yeah, um, Chris, there was one question that I was asked to ask you by uh, Frags, who does a lot of research for us, and uh, he, he may not be listening in tonight because he's recovering from a serious operation. But he did ask if I would ask you, um, just taking you back uh, a couple of months to the interview we did with Ian R. Crane, um, do you think you're about to make the A-list anytime soon? I don't think I'm going to be around long enough. <laughs> well, I hope I you think, are, Chris. I, I really do. I, I, I do and, and I'm, I'm not a big-headed man. I haven't got a big ego. Um, I, I know my failings and whatnot. Uh, I think... I think I will be remembered in the future. You'll certainly be remembered but, by us, Chris, and a, and a lot more, because I know you, you've got I, a lot I, of people... I think who... the, the, truth, the truth will come out, but I think it'll be too late for me. Well, I, do, I right? don't believe that, Chris. I don't believe that. I don't believe that it's too late. I don't think. I don't believe the, that. The, I, I don't the, believe the, that. What, what I know now, and, and what I've told you, is, is, is just a little portion of what I now know to be true. Okay, which I can prove to be true, um, and I am in great, great danger right now, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Without a doubt, and. What's worse is I don't even know that, that it's worse. I, I don't even know who I can trust. No, that's always a very difficult thing to know, Chris, um, because there well, are. I've got people about saying, you know, send, send, send Stacey. We'll look after her. We'll look after her. Uh, and you know what? And, and, and then I found out since that these people are on the other side, so how are they going to fucking look after her? Exactly. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, inf so, inf it, infiltration is always a big danger there, and we know that the, the whole, groups the are whole, infiltrated. Um, for want of a better word, truth movement is infiltrated, and, and uh, like we've been chatting off air, and, and I've shown to you tonight, the big, big names mm -hmm. yeah. are not what you think. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the whole movement, the whole, whole, for want of a better word, movement is corrupted. It is corrupted, and outside myself, because I, 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 obviously I know I'm legitimate, um, and I'm the one who's getting all this shit, um, I wouldn't trust anybody in, in you know, who, who was saying that um, these people are evil or, or not, because they're just as evil, because they're doing what they're paid to do, so to speak. You know, and that is every single Lane. Don't trust anybody. And I don't ask people to trust me. All I'm going to do, I'm going to put out the evidence that I've got. I don't care whether you believe it or not. Uh, as I say, for me, I think it's too late now. Uh, I really do. And history will prove me right. Okay, mm -hmm. but I don't expect anyone to take my word for it, and I don't blame people if they think that I, I'm a wrong and what you know. That, that's fine. I can I can live with that. My conscience is clear, but mm -hmm. I know what I've done. I have done for the right reasons. Well done, mate. Um, we've got a message there for just typed in by uh, Bernie Gad in the chat room. Bernie's a, a guy I've got a great deal of admiration for. He stuck his neck out with some of the things he said with us on air. And he's writing a book about it, and he's making it public chapter by chapter on Facebook. Um, so if you haven't read that, go to Bernie Gad on Facebook. And uh, it's quite an eye-opener. He says, Chris, you're a legend. Trust yourself, mate. And but steps... that's all you can do. And I say that, that that's all you can do. But we're, uh, I'm, I'm up against a big, mighty, mighty, and I have got the world sewn up. This isn't just a, a, a national thing. It's an international thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, take a look at the Spanish royal family. Not what you think. Now, um, actually, um, I, I've got pictures once again of, of William, who looks exactly like Juan uh, King Juan Carlos. Yeah. King Juan Carlos's wife looks exactly like um, Gold Digger Smith. <laughs> now, how, how's that for coincidence? Yeah, I, I saw some photographs of William and then photographs of Juan Carlos at the same age, and you, you couldn't tell them apart. And the same, same, same with his wife. Look at the wife, and look at Gold Digger Smith. Really? Wow. I'll have to check that one out as well. 
but it's all smoke and mirrors. It's not. It's not magic. Obviously, there, there, there is more to this um, satanic worship than, 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 than what we know about. They wouldn't do it for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years if there was nothing in it. No, uh, they might not. just enjoy orgies and whatnot. I believe they, they are darker folk, but they are not a different species to us. Whatever species we are, and we didn't evolve from monkeys, so whatever species we are, wherever we came from, we came from the same place as them. They are just like us, apart from they have that um, uh, that 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 loose cannon gene makes them psychopaths. Yeah. They are all without a doubt psychopaths, and psychopaths cannot feel guilt or or pity, empathy, and, and, and we're dealing with nasty, dangerous people who have the uh, armed forces and the police and all the technology at their disposal. And um, that, that's what I'm up against. And, and I say, the future's bright, the future's not fucking orange, mate. Not by a long way. That's worrying me, Chris, because our website is very orange. I'm just wondering if you want to change it. I mean, now. I mean, you, 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 this all goes back to France as well. Even to Josh Homme, everything, everything fits. Josh Homme, Homme is French for man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Josh Homme was supposedly the founder member of the um, um, uh, Eagles of Death Metal. We, we all got the name where their name came from. He was born in, in Orange County, right by Joshua Tree. The Joshua Tree was a famous album by U2. Who just did a concert for the French, which the Eagles Death Metal appeared on? U2. Who was pushing the story of, the, you know, furtherly the terrorist, 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 terrorist attack in Paris? U2. Joshua Tree, Orange County. You Google Orange County, you put something like um, Satanic Murders in Orange County, you will be amazed at the, the, the results you get on it. Orange is a very, the Orange Order, Protestants and, and, and all that. It's, orange is, is, is um, a, a really important car. And, and whenever you think, they do, they, they are driven by things like colours, symbols, numbers. Uh, and I say, hence, all these photos, I didn't get to send you one, but I will send you one, even if, if we finish talking. I'll send you uh, what I mean by these, these, these photographs pyramiding up. And when you think about what would be involved in doing so, on moving pictures to still make everything work, it, it, it's, well, there's not many people who could do that on, in, in this world now. I, I know I, I certainly couldn't because I said this is one of the things, it, it, it totally, totally, when I, when I discovered it, it totally blew me away. It takes a lot to blow me away. I, mean, I can go for all this, you know, um, Princess Diana never really existed rather outside photographs and, and, and a few body doubles. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can go with that. This pyramiding up of the pictures, which I say, we aren't meant to know about. If we'd have meant to know, it would have been a lot, uh, a lot clearer. Um, so it, it, it's for their benefit for some reason. Um, and it totally blew me away. It, uh, because... What would be involved, and I say I'm a bit of an artist myself, what would be involved in getting it to work, especially on, on pictures that moved it, if you just took, stopped that film anywhere, any random place, you could then take a screenshot of it, and it would still pyramid up exactly. Do you know? And that must have taken, well, it did take years, because the CCTV didn't really get released till 10 years after the fact anyway. But to go frame by frame making sure everything's in a position so it pyramids up it, it, it's totally totally mind-blowing it, it's one of the cleverest things i've certainly ever seen in my life and that it, that is why all this cctv is crap uh or you know blurry and whatnot and and, and why all these photoshop photo uh, people you think how can that be a put if you saw him he's run a mile his nose is that way across his face it's not bad photoshopping it's very clever photoshop it's photoshopping that's done so that the um, the grid, the pyramid grid, if you like, will work. And the pyramids, as you know, do, do play a big, big part in in the uh, uh, in, in in their grand scheme of things um, with, with the dollar bill and whatnot, you know. And um, but we're not meant to know about it. Mm. We've and got another why, message why... coming come in for you, Chris, from Slim Boy in the other chat room. And he says, Chris, this is why you are here at this time in history, to get the truth out, your destiny. I really do believe that. 
and I don't know how to say it because it, there, there's too many people really depend. Um, okay. to oh, just, to no, oh, here we go. He's back again. Sorry, yeah, we just start very that again. Of a loss. Now, we talk about destiny. Yeah. I, I, I used to have uh, before I was a terrorist, I was a builder and whatnot, and uh, quite a big building firm. I was VAT registered, had a million pound public liability before you know when when the norm was half a million and when whatnot. And I always knew that I, I'd be known. If you like, I never dreamed for a minute it would be for this because back in then, I, I was as bad as any of the bars. So, you know, money, money, money. Uh, I, I'm not a particularly nice person. Um, I was prone to violence. I was very hot headed. Um, and my life has changed around that, but I always knew, if you like, that, that I would be known. It, it was there. I, I, I thought, I thought, I don't know, I don't really know what I thought, whether, like, you know, I'd, I'd get picked up and, and, and be on the telly starring in some fucking role or whatever. But I didn't think for a minute it'd be known for this. No, but, uh, yeah, dest destiny is, is, is a thing. Like, life isn't like how we perceive it, do you know? No, Everything absolutely, does Chris. happen for a reason. Everything does happen to reason, and I think that, that's that's why I know. I'm We're big believers in that. Yeah. We're big believers in that here at Raconteurs News, uh, Destiny. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The weird shit that's happened to us in the last couple of years. Um, if you'd told me I was going to be sat here doing this uh, two years ago, I would have said you were completely off your nut. Well, and that, that's what I say. 15, 20 years ago, um, I wouldn't have liked me very much. No. No, I, I, I can say the same about myself, yeah. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to say a massive thank you, Chris. Um, you've really given us a boost with our first show on our own platform here. And uh, I think this is going to go so viral, it's going to knock our socks off. Um, I really hope so, because <laughs> that is just about the only hope now that I have, that yeah. people are aware of what I've said yeah. and the implications. And, and that is probably the only thing... That is going to keep me safe. Uh -huh. Well, keep speaking out as well, Chris. And I know you, you're on People's Internet Radio tomorrow night with Sean Maguire, aren't you? I am. Yeah, great. It's, it's all funny. I haven't done a, a, a radio interview for a long time. I haven't put nothing out in a long time. Yet two come at once. Yeah. Do you know that? that that's that, very strange. I, it, it, I, I'll tell you what. Um, made me get in touch with you, Chris. It was um, I listened to when I was out driving. I was listening to a podcast by another um, podcaster uh, who I won't mention, um, but he'd said that that people had asked him to get you on the show, and he'd said that he wouldn't because he'd made some allegation, you know, about David which, Cameron. Which, as you know, is is not true. Which it's is not true. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so and, and, uh, I would say, well, you know, prove it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, well, exactly. I mean, I don't think the person himself was in in a particular position to to, to sort of level that accusation at anybody. But um, no, anyway, well, that's, exactly that's what and, made and me and think of you. Yeah. So I well, thank him for again, that. I want to trust that bloke with, uh, with yours. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that, Chris. And like I say, big thanks for coming on tonight, mate. It's absolutely blown us away. Uh, thank you to Jason. And uh, we, we've nearly filled the three hours, and we've got a nice little tune to finish off with uh, from, well, from um, a member of the Raconteurs team. And uh, we'll be back Friday with our fin with financial insider, Paul, always a very popular guest. And uh, I know he's got some big news to give us, so it's going to be a cracking week, folks. Thanks, Jason, and thanks, Chris, and good night, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Governments that only govern for some of their people cause deep resentment. Governments that only govern for some of their people cause deep resentment.
governments that only govern for some of their people cause deep resentment. We must be clear, Muslims are persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy. We must be clear, Muslims are persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy. We must be clear, Muslims are persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy. We must be clear, Muslims are persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy. The 7-7 London attacks were staged. The 7-7 London attacks were staged. The 7-7 London attacks were staged. The 7-7 London attacks were staged.